Slash Snow Badger TV. Gary Chedister and Nate Johnson with you, bringing you the broadcast this afternoon as the Badgers take on the uh, Georgia Military College Bulldogs. And uh, Nate, it's been a good trip so far, and looks like we're going to have good uh, weather day. Absolutely, yeah. The, uh, the sun's out, but it's just a little breeze to keep us cool under this tent. But uh, for the most part, it should be a great game and a great day for football. Looking forward to it. This is uh, probably the Badgers' second longest trip that they're going to have this year. The trip to New York uh, to end the season will be the longest trip, and uh, time-wise and distance-wise as well. The Badgers will take one extra day on that trip to uh, play Monroe College to finish up their season. So uh, a, a great afternoon for football here, taking on Georgia Military, who gave Iowa Western a, a, a fairly tough game. They, they really did. I think that came down to, what, a 12- or 13-point game difference? I think so, yeah. Um, and the way Iowa Western's been playing, I was, I was really surprised. And this is a really good team. It's just not a bad team. It's not a pushover team by any stretch. Um, I'm excited to see what they do on the field today, though. Well, they, they always have a, a good team, as we'll uh, find out in the pregame interview with head coach Zach Erickson. They always have some good athletes, sometimes maybe one or two players away from the national championship. They did win the national championship in 2001, so uh, more recently than Snow College. Um, Snow College did play in the national championship game in, what, 2019, I believe it was, the fall of 2019, yes. and then uh, got into the playoffs in the uh, spring, or was it the no, spring? Okay. It was, it was a year later because it was the COVID year. Yeah. They went to the National Championship, then they went to the, the playoff the next year. That's right. 20, um, so 2020, spring of 2020. Yeah. Yeah. when the Badgers played in it. All right, so we're going to uh, take a uh, quick two-minute timeout. We'll continue with the pregame show and an interview with head coach Zach Erickson as the Snow College pregame show continues on KMTI. I thought there was only one way to do college. 
I knew I needed training to set me up for a great career, but I didn't have four years. Snow helped me discover that college doesn't have to be about sitting in classes, counting down the hours. They showed me a way to get the edge I needed, and fast. The best part was with their low-cost programs and tuition assistance, I didn't have to go into debt. I was able to earn my certificate and start working right away. Snow College. This is college. In life, we all need a strong support team. In sports and in day-to-day -day life, we have a trusted strong support team at Intermountain Stampede Valley Hospital. For up-to-date health care tips and guidelines, join our Facebook page and go to our website. From our physicians to our nursing staff, our technicians, and other specialized healthcare professionals, our team is ready to provide the best quality care for our friends, neighbors, and local athletes in San Pete County. And around San Pete Valley Hospital, keeping quality health care close to home. One of the best tickets in town will always be activities at our local schools. Athletic events, concerts, and plays. You can always count on an enjoyable time. Our children are the future. Let's give them all the encouragement we can. Go to a game, hear a concert, see a play. Utah Heritage Credit Union. Together we grow. Federally insured by NCUA. Online at utahheritagecu.org. MTCC, we're more than just internet people. We're the connecting your life people. For the past 115 years and counting, MTCC has been the local industry leader in connecting people and businesses by providing professional service with the best options in technology. If you need phone, TV, or internet service for your home or business, come see the experts at MTCC. Call or text us today at 435-835-2929. MTCC, connecting your life since 1907. The pride of the Badgers. A-F-T-I! Welcome back to the Snow College pregame show. Gary Chester along with Zach Erickson. A reminder, the Snow College has put together one of the finest online offerings for education in the state of Utah and nationwide. Be sure to visit snow.edu for more information. Coach, congratulations on the win last week. You had me uh, very nervous for three <laughs> very long quarters, but, but the fourth quarter you guys pulled it out, and, and you did what you had to do to win. Yeah, um, that, that's funny that you say you're nervous, because if I would have watched the game, maybe I would have been in the same boat. Um, but there wasn't a point in that game that I didn't think we were not going to win. Just the way that it was going, the way that our defense was playing, and the way that we we moved the ball in chunks, but for some reason something crazy, I don't know. You know. And, and the wind, I knew that our quarterback was better than their quarterback, and the wind was a disaster, and at some point our guy was going to be the one to make the play, which that first touchdown Donnie threw to Jared, uh, you know, kind of was that big relief of, okay, we've got this. Um, and then, you know, defense went out and got one more stop, and we marched right back down the field and scored a second time. And um, it was a, it was a exhausting game, I will tell you that. It was an exhausting game because you had to play for 60 minutes flat out. There was no time to, to let up at all, and, and I was super proud of our guys for playing for the full 60 minutes. That's what I told them after the game. I said, if y'all would have played for 59 or 51 minutes, we may have lost this game, right. but because you played for all 60 minutes, you know, we didn't score that last touchdown until 10 minutes left in the game, and so it's like, if you would have stopped at 50, you know, we could have lost the game, but you played all 60 minutes, and, and that's one of the things we pride ourselves in is being able to go out and play a full 60 minutes, and that's a good team. Dodge is a good team. I, I think they are much improved, and, and I think a lot of people, um, if I'm not mistaken, they actually moved up in the rankings this last week, even with a loss. Yeah, I um, but I think that because they played us so tough that the, the, the voters were like, yeah, they're probably a pretty good team. And, and I would I would say, yes, they are. They're, they're one of the better teams we played this year, and uh, they play hard. And um, so it was – we were proud of our guys for, like I said, playing full 60 minutes and, and getting the W. A couple of keys that I thought in the game, and I, I might be totally off, but – I, I thought after they scored that first touchdown and had the uh, unsportsmanlike, you taking that penalty then, making them kick that extra point from 15 yards, yeah. brilliant move, Coach. Uh, I mean, you didn't, you wouldn't have gained much if you were kicking into the wind anyway, but making them kick that extra point into the wind and he doinks it off the, the, the upright. So that was huge. 
and then the penalty they got on the illegal block on the touchdown took points off the board. I thought that was huge too. Yeah, yeah. No, we definitely that that PAT. There wasn't even a thought with them having to kick into the wind. It was because it was a 15 yarder. It was like, you no, know, yeah, we're absolutely going to make them re-kick that. Um, because I mean, I don't know if people listening. I mean, I'm sure you informed them of how hard the wind was blowing. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it was because you're right. It was like on the kickoff, what do we gain? You know, I wasn't. They're not going to kick it very far anyways into the wind. And so I said. I said, hey, let's back them up right now and, and make them kick this into the wind. And ultimately, you know, they missed. And so I was like, okay, that's that's a big one. And then, yeah, they, you know, anytime you get points taken off the board for penalties, you just uh, you just bang your head up against the wall. And then it was a turnover on the very yeah, next play. Yeah, on the next play, yeah, we got the ball. And so it's like, you know, there's some things. And then, you know, it's funny, a lot of people ask, well, why did you go for two on the second touchdown? Um, and because that made it a nine point game. And so, you know, if we if we missed it, it was a seven point game and you know, they yes, could they have scored and gone for two and beat us? Yes. But I liked my chances of getting a two point conversion better and putting it pretty much out of reach, right, to uh, to make it a two possession or a two score game as opposed to them going, you know, I felt like our defense was playing Phenomenal, and and you know they did exactly what they needed to do, and so that was kind of another decision there late in the game that we're like, yeah, if we go for two and we get this, now it's a nine-point game, and now they would have to score twice to to get back in this thing, and so um, yeah, it was it was a fun game. Like I said, it was just exhausting because you you things were working, but we just couldn't finish things, and so it was it was exhausting to stay on. On schedule and to go and you know, but uh, but 60 minutes and that's why you play the game and that's why you play the whole game and and you know some of those decisions they come up in the game and sometimes you get it right sometimes you get it wrong and and I think this week this last week we got most of them right and so uh, we're glad it went in our favor. Well, I and and I talked about the two point conversion with Rob. Uh, I don't think we talked about it on the air necessarily, but we talked about it. And, and I thought it's a reflection of your confidence in the defense. Yeah. And they were playing phenomenal. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the defense gave up the one, the one touchdown, but that was with a short field. And they, they just played tremendous. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I think that's exactly what a lot of that confidence and choice was. You know, I, I bump over to, to Coach Pula, our defense coordinator, in the headset, and he knows in that situation, I didn't even get to get the full question out of, we're going for two, right? Before he said, yeah, you're going for it. Like, and that was just kind of, you know, we, we work really well together in that. And, and I've got a lot of confidence in him and, and what he's doing. And, and what I'll tell you is if you watch our defense, everybody knows we're young. We're, we're, we're playing a lot of guys that have not played or don't have a lot of experience. But every week our defense is getting better and better and better. And and I got to give a big shout out to who I thought played the best game of the year defensively in Brian Cuthbertson. He, he was all over the place. And, you know, TFLs and fumbles and two interceptions. And, and that last interception that he caught, how he caught that. Beyond me, I have no idea, um, but Brian, Brian kind of is, is slowly emerging as one of the leaders on that defense, which is so great for us because, you know, Brian was poised to start probably getting some playing time and begin his career last year, and then he got sidelined with that ACL in that first game last year. And uh, to see him be able to come back and play at this level – you know, he's getting better and better and better. And so we're really excited kind of with what that defense is doing. He was the player of the game or steel man of the game Great. that yeah. we chose. So, all right, coach, we'll take a, a two minute timeout. We'll be back with more on the snow college pregame show. A reminder that snow college has uh, the great education opportunities available at an affordable price. Visit snow.edu for more information. That's a rock here. The food nanny. Scott here. Sammy. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account of my style. My style checking. I'm talking travel points, your car, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's my style. 
Let's go. Check it out. Give it a shot. Open your MySail checking account today. CO Building Systems in Ephraim manufactures a complete line of metal roofing and accessories. And here are just a few reasons why you should buy from CO. First, they offer lower prices. Second, CO offers top quality products which can be custom cut to fit your needs. Third, they offer quick turnaround time on all orders. You can pick up at the plant or they'll ship the materials to you. For a free estimate and more information, contact CO Building Systems in Ephraim. Toll free, 800-262-5347 or online at cobuildings.com. Sand Pete Steel in Moroni was founded in 1994 and is one of the major steel construction companies in the Intermountain West specializing in structural steel fabrication and erection. Sand Pete Steel's impressive portfolio includes the Hale Theater in Sandy and structures on the campuses of the University of Utah, BYU, and UVU. Sand Pete Steel in Moroni, where their motto is done right and on time at 685 East Main in Moroni. Call 800-261-1026, 800-261-1026, or sandpetesteel.com. You're listening to Snow Badger Sports on KMGS! <laughs> Welcome back to the Snow College pregame show. Gary Chipster along with head coach Zach Erickson. Coach, uh, you, you brought up the wind uh, last week, and yes, we talked about it ad nauseum. I mean, we, we, we did talk about it a lot, and then there were times when we thought, well, maybe it's not as big a deal as we thought, but it, it was a pretty big deal. It, it affected some of your decisions. I mean, you guys only punted once the whole game. Oh, it affected probably all of our decisions. Um, we we knew pregame we made that decision to if we're going if we have the wind in our face we weren't going to punt. Um, too many bad things could have happened. You know, if it's a bad snap and the wind kind of messes with the snap, or if he doesn't get it right and gets it up, like you could lose yardage on a punt. So we made that decision. In pregame, when we were out in pregame and realized the wind was blowing 40 something miles an hour, we're like, Yeah, we're not even going to punt going that direction. Um, but what a lot of people may not understand is even with the wind at your back, it was hard to want to throw the ball uh, because now the ball was sailing on us and trying to, I mean, it was okay to be able to dink and dunk, right? That, that wasn't going to affect it that much, but to try to push the ball down the field um, was. Even that was hard. And so so throwing the ball, I mean, I think Donnie was like, I think we still threw it 30 times. We only completed 12 of them. But uh, it was, you know, it was very much a decision in, in the, the play calling, in the kicking game, um, in penalties and how to, to assess and take penalties. Um, probably probably the windiest game I've ever coached in in my career. And, you know, that's 15, 16 years. And I've never played in a game where the wind was that strong that consistently throughout the game like it right. didn't stop it wasn't like it was gusting it was like the wind was blowing it's like somebody turned massive fans on in that <laughs> no I, I think that was the north end zone it and it was just blowing south the entire game and uh, there was there was about a maybe a 10 minute window where it relaxed a little bit um, but then it picked right back up, and off we were. So, yeah, it was kind of kind of wild, and, and it, I, it absolutely had an effect on that game. Um, but but like I tell our players, the the climate, the conditions, the weather conditions, it might be too windy for other people, but it's just right for us. <laughs> it might be too cold for other people, but it's just right for us. And that's something that they believe in, and they you know we we talk about that in in any situation. It's too hot for them. It's just right for us. Whatever whatever weather is out there, our guys believe that it's just right for us. And so uh, that's one of those things that I think really helps us in those type of situations. All right. So uh, game behind us. We, we move up one more slot in the, in the polls. And you've got Georgia Military this week. Georgia Military, always a, a, a good team. I mean, they're, they're, they're going to bring a good game against you. Yeah, that, I mean... It's Georgia, <laughs> right? You you can almost stop right there. I mean, when you talk about football players, I mean, the the list is small of states. When you say, okay, who produces the best football players, and and some people would put California in the mix, yeah, sometimes. But but I, if you're asking me, some combination of Georgia, Texas, Florida is going to be the best football players, best athletes in the country. Um, and so 
we know that, and we know that every year they're going to show up with some of the best athletes that we will see all year. Um, and then, you know, Coach Manchester, he does such a good job. He's been there a long time, and, and he he knows and understands junior college football. And, um, you know, sometimes he gets the right pieces, and, and they're national title contenders, and, and sometimes he's a piece or two away. And it's interesting because even though they're 2-2 two and two right now, or actually I think they're 3-2 and because they've played one more game than us, um, they – even in their losses, you know, they played Iowa Western to like 10 points and, and it was late that Western got some of those points to be able to beat them. Um, in that game, they look at times like the better football team. Um, and and then, you know, I, I think they struggled against Tyler. Um, I, I, that game, they don't, in that game, they don't look like they look in their other four games. Um, in those other four games, uh they look like they're one of the best teams. And then I don't know if, if you know, good old Coach Jacobson just had their number or what, but they, I mean, they threw the ball all over the place on Georgia Military, Tyler did. And it was just, it was kind of like a fluke. I mean, it's like, what in the world happened in this game? Because you guys don't, yeah, you don't look the same. And so, you know, you don't know, is it injury? Is it, you know, who knows? And so, um we're going out there expecting, you know, to, to play a tough physical football team. And what they do, their, their scheme on both sides of the ball, always is, it's, it's one of those things that it's just rare enough anymore that it gives you fits, right? Defensively, they base out of a 3-3 stack. And so that, you know, in the run game, that can kind of mess with you because it's not something you see a lot, right? And so... You know, when you're playing against teams that play a 3-4, teams that play a 4-3, or even the 4-2-5s now, you, you you have a pretty good idea of what works and because and, that's what you see a lot of. And then you get to this stinking 3-3 stack, and, and Georgia Military does it and Lackawanna does it. And that's the only two times we'll see it all year. Um, and so uh, it it there are things that work, right? And we have a really good game plan going in, and but you're always just kind of – just gives you a pause to wonder, okay, are we really going to be able to execute against this? And it's really hard to get a, a look during the weekend practice because it's also, you know, our guys, our, our attack team defensive guys, this is something they've never done. And and the fits are different, and right? And so it's just a little hard to get a quality look throughout the week versus something that a lot of guys have never done. And so, um, you know, when you, you travel out there, you go two time zones, and uh, you know, back to the humidity and the heat. There's all these things that kind of go into that, and so you just hope that our guys are are poised and ready to go. And I think, I think we built a lot of confidence the last couple of weeks. I mean, you know, the wins against Nimi and the wins against Dodgers are really, really good wins, and and I think our guys are starting to kind of know what the expectation is and kind of get a feel for. Like I said, we're young, and so now they kind of are knowing what college football is like, and. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that confidence carries over, and, and we can do what we need to do to, to win the game. All right, Coach, let's take another break on the Soul College pregame show. When we come back, we'll talk about the keys for a Badger win. We'll do that right after this. I didn't realize just how much of my kids' schoolwork is online. They use the Internet to do their homework, take tests, and turn in papers. And with four kids all trying to get their schoolwork done at the same time, our home Internet has to be reliable. With our new Centricom Internet... They can do their homework at the same time. <laughs> now they can't use lousy internet as an excuse for not getting their homework done. Sign up for Centricom Internet Service with speeds up to one gig. Go to Centricom.com today. In the days of the Mountain Men, Cache Valley, Utah became a central gathering place for trappers and explorers. This enterprising spirit of community continues today at Cache Valley Bank with locations and services throughout Utah, including three branches right here in San Pete County. No matter your mountain, they want to see you reach the top. They're sent for Utah's financial outfitter. Let's keep that heritage alive. Together, discover Cache Valley Bank. Mountains await. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The home of Snow Badger Sports. KFTI! Welcome back to the Snow College pregame show with head coach Zach Erickson. Coach, again, as we're watching the game here, what, what do we need to be seeing to know that the Badgers are on track for a win? Yeah. Um, 
sometimes I think this gets a little repetitive, but but for us, we, we hang our hats on, on these things, right? And um, so kind of like we just talked about in the last segment, we've got to be able to make sure we can establish the run game against this front. And what, what you may see... Um, you might see Donnie running a little bit more uh, this week, getting him involved in the running game um, at quarterback, uh, and or uh, seeing us uh, with Hiram back there uh, and the Wildcat um, incorporating that because what that does for us is in that stack, they have a six-man box. If we can run with the quarterback, now it evens the numbers out. Um, and so now we can get six on six and hats on hats. And so... Uh, being able to establish the run game and and schematically being able to do that by adding the quarterback into that um, will be really big for us. Um, they've got th- the flip side of that, probably key number two, will be to stop their run game. Um, their, their defensive line um, is good, but not particularly big. Uh, it's the exact opposite on their offensive line. Their offensive line is good and really, really big. Um, their offensive line is much bigger than our defensive line. And so we've got to, to make sure that we are sound in our run fits, um, make sure we're maintaining our gaps to not allow them to establish their running game, which has kind of been their MO. They've been able to pretty much run the ball on everybody this year. Um, and so we've got to stop that. And then, like we've been, we'd be plus in the turnovers. You know, I mean, the, the, I hate the fact that we turned the ball over last week um, because we would have been really plus in the turnovers if we wouldn't have turned the ball over. I think our defense created four turnovers last week. Yeah, um, it, yeah it, it was a lot. And, uh, and I think we gave it up one or two times as well and so we still ended up plus but but that's that's key i mean anytime i mean kind of the things that we use as a barometer or gauge in in junior college football is um 24 points if you score 24 points in a game you're going to win like 80 percent of your games if you score 24 points and have over 100 yards rushing uh, you're going to win like 88% of your games. And if you score 24 points, have 100 yards rushing, and are positive in the turnover battle, you're going to win like 96% of your games. And so, I mean, we focus on those things. I mean, we haven't scored a ton of points yet. Um, I mean, you know, we I think, what do we got? We got to 24 against Trinity, and then we scored 23 against Nimi, and then we scored 45, and then we scored 15. But... And it's really funny. We actually have offensive goals. This is kind of a tangent. We have offensive goals uh, that we set each week. Uh, they're, they're they're the same every week, right? Okay. Um, you know, we want to have over 400 yards of offense. We want to score 35 plus points. We want to be positive in the turnovers. There, there's a whole list of them. And for the first time in my career, when we review those on Monday with the offense, we didn't meet a single one wow. of there's there's. 10 goals on the page. The first nine are offensively based, and then the last one is just win. Like, that's, and that was the only one. That's the most that, important. It is the most important one, and that is the only one that we met. And I, I said to the other, I said, this is probably the first time in my career that we have won a game and not met any of those goals. So it's kind of a, kind of a little bit of a fluke, but, again, it was kind of a weird deal. But, yeah, we gotta we got to run the ball. We got to not let them run the ball, um, especially with their big offensive linemen, and then uh, protect the ball and create turnovers. And our defense has done a great job at creating turnovers. And offensively, we've got to be better at not turning the ball over. And so um, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how our quarterbacks and Hiram kind of do in in adding to this run game. Because um, you know, if you, if you watch back and you, you look. Um, Trinity, we got Hiram involved a little bit. Um, Nimi, we got him involved a lot. Um, and and then he's kind of been kind of on the back burner the last couple of weeks. Not really intentionally. It's just kind of the way that the game plans have fallen. Uh, but look to see uh, Hiram have a big impact again this week um, in the offensive game plan. All right. Coach, we'll talk to you after a Badger win. Sounds good. We'll be back with more on the Snow College pregame show right after this. I'm John Sorensen. I'm a general surgeon here at Central Valley Medical Center in Nephi. For the last 29 years, I've been involved in the U.S. Army Medical Corps and deployed four times in the last 15 years. When I got back, I decided I wanted to work in a smaller community and take care of patients. Nephi fits that bill very nicely. People are wonderful. I think all of my experiences have contributed 
committed to making me a better physician. I'm interested in continuing to improve myself and my skills here in Nephi. The home of Snow Badger Sports. Welcome back once again to Milledgeville, Georgia. Gary Chettis and Nate Johnson with you, bringing you Badger football action as we're set for the kickoff. A high end over end kick is going to carry down to the one yard line. The Badgers will return it. It's King getting out to the 10, the 15, and he's going to be swallowed up there just short of the 20 yard line. Yeah, one of the things about George Mozart, they do very, very well, is they stay contained in their lanes. They always have. Um, it's going to be really hard to find an opening on the kickoffs, punt returns, things like that. They're very sound. So the Badgers will start first and 10, and they were fairly generous. They're giving the start at the 19 yard line. And that's where the Badgers will start. And a correction to the pregame, in the walkthrough Friday morning, Hiram Boren pulled a hamstring. Yep. So yeah, he is not going to be playing at all in this game. Hopefully he might be ready for next week. Yeah, we hope so. First opportunity for the Badgers, hand off to Tillman, and Tillman goes nowhere. In fact, he's going to lose yardage and be pushed back all the way inside the 10, loses the helmet. And they're going to give him a loss of one. It's going to bring up second and 11. Yeah, and I think Coach Erickson talked about this, was their, their defensive front is very strong. Um, and and they, they play to the run both offensively and defensively. If you're going to beat Georgia military, it's got to be in the air. That tackle was made by Janario Holt, Jr., right in the middle of that defense for Georgia military. And again, a different defense than the Badgers will see all year. Play action. Donovan throws behind the intended receiver that time for Snow College was Jared Wilson, who has emerged as uh, one of the key receivers for Snow. Yeah, he just, you know, he got a little bit off front of himself and threw behind the receiver, which it was wide open. That's, that's tough because that would have put him really close to first down. Uh, very unfortunate pass. Badgers bring in Tyreek Carter, and he splits wide to the right. Carter has family here. And the long snap count here as Donovan looks to the sidelines. Play clock is down to 15. On third and 11. Smith, back to pass. Has time, throws out in the flats. Got a running back out there. That's going to be Lambert. I believe Lambert. Yep, Lambert has the first down, and that'll move the chains. Yeah, and that's going to be the key is, is getting to the outside edge. Um, whether they're running the ball or passing the ball, um, that's going to open things up real fast on the outside. Lambert, the lone man in the backfield. Badgers go with two wideouts left, two right. Quick pass is going to be out to the left. That's going to be caught by Shatamide King. Io picks up, what, about five yards maybe? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Bring up second and five. It is a hard call being that we're sitting this close to the field um, in the stands <laughs> to be able to see everything. Yeah, Matt Smith's now in our way. And, I know. But he's running the camera. We yeah, he's probably in his wife's way all the time, too. So. <laughs> Pass out in the flats for Wilson. Wilson's got the first down down the sidelines. Flags all over. And that's usually where it's going to be an illegal block or maybe even a lineman down for you. Yeah, my guess is more of a block. Uh, that so pass was thrown behind the line of scrimmage, so where did they pick those up? Was it an illegal, maybe hands of the face, something like uh, that, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. We'll wait like and see what the call is. And yeah, it's on snow. And the signal is going to go to the far sideline, so we aren't going to get a very good look at it. Holding is the call. You know, and that's, that's been one of the, the key heels this, this year for the Badgers, is they have been penalized quite a bit, and they really do need to clean it up a little bit from that angle. Um, a very dominant team, just, just the, the penalties have, have hurt them a lot. Well, that one only cost them two yards, other than you lose all the yards you gained on a big play. Handoff goes to Lambert again. Lambert gets nothing. In fact, he does not get back to line of scrimmage. I'm going to say a loss of a half a yard is going to bring up third and a long six. 
This is where so far the last the last two third downs you've had the flats have been open. I'm wondering if they go back to it. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. Matt's complaining. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he can't see. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Big third down here for Snow College. Third and six. Handoff goes to Lambert. Lambert, or Tillman. Tim, 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 Tillman. No, it is Lambert. Lambert. And they're going to say he does he have a first down, so yeah, that's going to move the chains. That's a great run up the middle. You know, they've tightened that up so far in this game, so to see a hole break open right there this early has been, been really a nice look. Big first down for the Badgers now out near midfield, out to the 44-yard line. First and 10. Again, Lambert, the lone man in the backfield. Badgers went with trips to the left. Pass to Lambert again out of the backfield. Lambert goes up and over the top. Loses the ball. They're, they're going to say he was down. That was a gutsy, uh, gutsy leap. And that's what happens when you get off your feet is that you have the chance to lose that ball, which he did. Luckily, we got, you know, Snow got it back. But uh, um, that plays worked twice now, and I think it's going to be open a lot. I agree. Shot on my king, split wide to the left. Hand off once again to Lambert. Lambert tries the right side and then cuts it up for a gain of a couple of yards. Looks like he's got enough of the first down. That does move the chains. Badgers started inside their own 20-yard line on this drive. Now they find themselves in Bulldog territory at the 46. Yeah, this is a really good way to start a game. Uh, you're, you're establishing both run and pass, which is what you want to keep balanced. Jared Wilson in the slot to the left. Shadomai King wide to the left. Pele Ua is the tight end on the left side of the formation. Bulldog show blitz. Back to pass. Under pressure and getting back just almost to the line of scrimmage. It looks like a loss of two. Okay. On Donovan Smith that time just could not find an opening in that blitz. It's going to be tough to run up the middle, um, that is for sure. So second down and 12. Trip split wide to the left for the Badgers. Donovan long snap count. Back to pass. Steps up in the pocket, goes over the middle on a crossing route. It's going to be caught. And where's the forward momentum going to give it? To about the 40. Like the 40, yeah. And it looks like that's King on the catch. Shandon King whose dad we talked to a little bit earlier here. Yeah, it, was, it was fun to it's fun to chat with some of the parents, you know, that we don't get to see very often. So this is it's fun. So another third down here for Snow College, third and five. No score as we are just starting on the first possession here in the ball game. In motion is Lambert. Quick slant. To Wilson. Wilson makes the catch and goes down, but he's going to have the first down again. Badgers continue to move the chains. Very impressive opening drive here by Snow College. Oh, absolutely. Looks like number 11, um, Walden, the Mahi, he took a pretty good stinger. Uh, was it Wal yeah, Walden took a pretty good stinger, came off the field on that hit. Wilson bounces up, and he's going to be in the slot to the left once again. Coach Miller play. jumps off sides, flag is down, the Badgers going to go for the touchdown, nice catch out there by the Badgers, Amir Magruder, and he's going to be inside the 10-yard line. Oh, that's a great look, you know, Donovan looks and he sees he's got a free play, you might as well just go to go all out, and uh, that's what he's going to do for him. So the Badgers are going to have first and goal now inside the 10-yard line. So the Badgers decline the offsides penalty. I can't tell where the freaking ball is. That's in about the seven. Badgers send a man in motion. That's Pea Ua. Throw to the corner of the end zone. It's blocked right at the line of scrimmage. And it'll be incomplete. Bring up a second and goal. Yeah, and luckily, luckily it kind of bounced back to the outside versus back into the middle of the field where someone could have intercepted it, so. What do you do here? You run a play action? What do you do? Whatever gets it in the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> A.J. Tillman and Spencer Lambert in the backfield now for Donovan. Donovan looks to the sidelines. If Zach ever listened to me, I would go play action. That's just me. I like play action at this point. 
And off to Tillman. Tillman looked like he was going to go wide. Now he finds a little opening and turns it up. He's going to gain about three or four yards, but he's going to still be short. But he is inside the five. It looks like marked at about the four. Yeah, it's hard to see from this from this well, angle. Even the score they're the not four. putting where the ball is. No, they've, they've been sitting on the 20 the whole game, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Third and goal from the four. And off to Lambert. Lambert's into the end zone, I believe. Yes, touchdown. I'm going to give him a four-yard run. Yeah. Spencer Lambert. That was a great run because there, there was one little hole in the middle of the left side or the right side of the offensive line that uh, opened up, and he just cut right back into it. Really, really good read. So Spencer Lambert, four-yard touchdown run. The extra point coming up now from Kiesler. As the Badgers get on the board first here, they take the opening drive, 81 yards. The extra point is up, and the extra point is good, and the Badgers lead it 7 to nothing. We'll be back with the kickoff after this 30-second timeout. I thought there was only one way to do college. I knew I needed training to set me up for a great career, but I didn't have four years. Snow helped me discover that college doesn't have to be about sitting in classes, counting down the hours. They showed me a way to get the edge I needed, and fast. The best part was with their low-cost programs and tuition assistance, I didn't have to go into debt. I was able to earn my certificate and start working right away. Snow College. This is college. This is Snow College Sports Action on GFDS. Welcome back once again to Millageville, Georgia. No, I didn't lose any right here. Okay. Millageville, Georgia, where the Badgers have uh, gone on top here by a score of 7 to nothing. The Badgers score on their opening drive with 8.14 remaining on a four-yard run by Spencer Lambert. The point after is good. Badgers picked up five first downs on that very methodical drive downfield, picked up some key uh, first downs on third down. Yeah, everything looked really balanced. It didn't look like they had to force anything. Um, and, and the plays are looking really smooth and coming together right now. It's, it's nice to watch. Georgia Military on the return. And that is a huge hit. Who's coming up with that? 30. That's Clark. Alex Clark on the hit. Very cool. I talked to him last night at uh, dinner, and he said, yeah, my dad's going to be here, and that fired him up. I'll tell you what, he, if he missed him, it's, a, it's wide open on the field, but he made a stick of a hit right there that was fun. Where did they mark that? About the 15, mm, 16? Like they got him in the 15. On 15-yard line for Georgia Military, their first possession. Going to come out and try to answer that opening drive by the Badgers. So College Badgers get it in the MACU end zone. Mount America Credit Union guiding you forward with affordable financial services and expert advice. Details available at macu.com. What happened? Uh, offsides on the Badgers on the kickoff, it looks like. They're going to re-kick it. And we ought to mention uh, five times here because of the five first downs the Badgers picked up. The Douglas Dentistry <laughs> first down. Douglas Dentistry with in-house financing. Show off that smile. 435-283-3800. Sorry about that, Golden. We'll get you better. So we'll have to uh, re-kick it, see if the Badgers can come up with uh, as good a coverage as they did on the last one. And here comes the kick from five yards back. High end over end kick is going to be fielded inside the five yard line. A little more room to run. Clark just ran over the blocker again, but they run away from him. And not much better um, out over the 15 to what, about the 17 maybe, but I, not I, much better. I actually think they did, they're sitting about the 13. Uh, Am I reading that wrong? I think you're reading wrong. The 20, they're, they're inside the 20. Oh, you're right, you're I, right. I think they're on, on the 19. Yeah. You're right. It is hard to see. We're not very elevated here, but they did bring us a tent, so we're in the shade, and so I'm not complaining. No. Oh, it's a beautiful facility, Gary. I'll tell you what, if anyone ever comes to Northern Georgia, come check out this facility. It's great. Man in motion. Back to pass, military. Bulldogs under pressure. The quarterback is going to scramble. Late flag comes in. Badgers got some good pressure on uh, the quarterback, Cooper Chip, or Chip Cooper, excuse me, Chip Cooper. 
but he was able to get out of it, but I think it's going to come back with a holding. Yeah. So one of the things that I did notice about uh, Georgia military, they are very run dominant, right? Um, and then on the first play, they come out in the pass. So they do come out, but, but, but looking at the statistics, they have two right. people that run the ball. They have the running back, right, number 26, and number three, their quarterback, uh, have the most rushing yards for this team. And I imagine they do a lot of, you know, play action stuff where they do a lot of read option type, type play. So it's going to bring up a first and 20 now. Shotgun formation for Cooper. Hand off on a little delay, and that's going to be a good game. Out over the 20 to near the 25-yard line, so they get all of it back plus some. On the carry is uh, Jamarian Walker. In the games that they have won, he has had over 100 yards rushing on both those games. So if Snow can keep him under 100 yards, uh, they're going to be all right. Walker again on the carry. This time he's over the 20. And that's going to be enough for a first down. So the Bulldogs pick up their first down and move the chains as he's actually at the 30, it looks like. First and 10 at the 30. Again, the quarterback is Chip Cooper. And in the backfield is Jamarian Walker. Man in motion. Handoff goes to Walker again. Walker trying that left side. And the pile moves about three yards that time. So it's going to bring up a second and seven. You know, the, the thing that blew me away more than anything, Gary, on this running back, Jamal Walker, is he's 5'6", 205 pounds. So if you hit him high, you're not going to tackle him very easily. Um, you got to hit him, hit him low, and it's hard to get low on someone that's 5'6". Well, he, he looks like a mini refrigerator. Sure does. <laughs> I would not want to be hit in the middle of the field by him. Cooper goes downfield, throws it way out of bounds, incomplete. So third and long, and that's where the Badgers want to keep Georgia military. Yeah, Jamarian Walker, 5'7", 223 out of Is the field. Like yep. Okay. What? So I was looking on the website, oh. and it said 5'6", 205. So that could obviously have changed from last year to this year because he was a sophomore, yeah? Yeah, he's gained 20 pounds then. It's on his thighs, too. He is just yeah, muscle. He is pretty solid. Big third down, quarterback draw, and he's got the Boca tackle, breaks another tackle, and picks up the first down on the quarterback draw, Chip Cooper. And I would imagine that's pretty much their game strategy is, is handoff at the middle, handoff, and we're going to read option stuff with the quarterback. Uh, they do not pass a lot. Clock will run. Cooper looks to the sidelines. They've got uh, Jaleen Flood in there, in the backfield now as well. So a split backfield this time. Again, man in motion, the tight end comes back into the formation. And off straight ahead, no. It's gonna be Chip Cooper breaks a tackle, still on his feet. He's into Badger territory at the 45 yard line. And that's that read option again to the left. You fake the handoff up the middle and take around the option. Chip Cooper's very elusive. It, it looks like the Badgers are ready to, to be able to make a tackle and then he just slides and keeps going. Yeah. Yeah, he's very quick on his feet, that's for sure, especially side to side. Chip Cooper from Sylvester, Georgia. Again, shotgun formation with two men in the backfield with him. Cooper takes the snap, hands it off straight ahead. That's going to be Walker again. Walker finally driven backwards. The Badgers trying to strip him. A very late whistle. But that's going to be a gain of a few yards. And the Badgers are going to lose both Cuth Cuthbertson and Elijah Wilson, as both of them have helmet issues, Cuthbertson comes off. Is that Wilson laying on the, on the turf still with Spencer? No, I think that's somebody else. But we do have an injured Badger on the field. It's right in front of the Badger bench, so we can't, can't hardly see him. We're going to take this opportunity for a timeout as well. This is going to be a Central Valley Medical Center timeout from orthopedics to pediatrics. Trust CVMC. 
In life, we all need a strong support team. In sports and in day-to-day -day life, we have a trusted strong support team at Intermountain Sampy Valley Hospital. For up-to-date health care tips and guidelines, join our Facebook page and go to our website. From our physicians to our nursing staff, our technicians, and other specialized health care professionals, our team is ready to provide the best quality care for our friends, neighbors, and local athletes in San Pete County. Intermountain San Pete Valley Hospital, keeping quality health care close to home. Your connection for Snow College Sports. KMTI! Welcome back once again to Millersville, Georgia. Tremell Wright is the injured Badger, and he comes off the field being helped by Spencer Mack, the athletic trainer. Second down and uh, four after the gain of six by Jamarian Walker. Walker still in the backfield with Chip Cooper. Laid off the sideline is Ivan Arroyo, who comes in at the fullback position. Now well, kind of that wing position. Is that option again? Cooper keeps it. Pitches it at the last second. The ball is still loose. It's still loose. The Badgers, do they come up with it? Yes, they do. The Badgers come up with the fumble. You know, that's the only way that you really can, can offset that, that option is you have to hit the quarterback. Um, and they did it very well, which forced the, the running back to take a late hit, which caused him to drop the ball. So the Badgers are going to take over a decent field position here at the 34-yard line. So the Bulldogs were, were driving well. They picked up three first downs, got into Badger territory, but the turnover gives it back to Snow College. Yeah, it's a really good opportunity for the Badgers now to come back and throw the ball and then put a second score up on Wind's starting to pick up just a little bit here in Milledgeville. Georgia shuffles on the defensive line. Handoff goes to King. King on a jet sweep and gets out to the 40-yard line. Hit hard a couple of times, but able to pick up good yardage there. Game of seven. Six, six, seven. Yep. That was a great run. So a good run by Shandon King on that jet sweep. Badgers now go with four wide outs. Two left, two right. A.J. Tillman in the backfield on this series. Pass on the quick slant is going to be caught by Io Shotamide King, and that's going to be enough for the first down. A Douglas Dentistry first down. That's right, that's right. right. Douglas Dentistry in Ephraim should be your first choice in dentistry and oral health, from general to sedation dentistry, teeth whitening, and even tooth replacement. First and 10 for the Badgers at the 45 yard line. Donovan Smith, long snap count, now looks to the sidelines. Pea Ud, the tight end, is actually in the backfield here on the left side of the formation. Now he goes in motion from left to right, now comes back to the left. Handoff goes to Tillman. Tillman breaks a tackle, still on his feet. And he's into Georgia, or Georgia military territory at the 49-yard line. Now Helmet, Helmet come out for one of the Bulldogs here. He's got to come out the field for a play, and then he'll be back next play. Tejon Roach. Shotgun formation, play action, pass is blocked, but still caught by Peyarua. And Peyarua picks up one tough, very tough yard. He sure did. I mean, the way the ball was deflected, it could have gone to the ground. He ended up picking that up and then somehow making the hit and getting an extra yard. You know, picks up one. Antonio Reeves Jr. on the tackle. Third down and a long three here. Shot on my king to the left. Wilson in the slot to the right. Peya Ua in the backfield. A.J. Tillman, the deep man in the backfield here behind Donovan Smith. You know, this is kind of one of those play positioning of the field where do you take a shot? You know, you're third and mid. You play action, you can go deep. You know, I wonder what Zach's going to call up here. Badgers just get the play away. Donovan rolls out, throws short. He's got Peya Ua who's cut down immediately. Short of the first down. Great defensive play there by Jack, Jackery Jones. Jackery Jones. From Monroe, Georgia. He just right off the road. And he might have taken the worst of that as he is still out on the field here. Looks like we're going to have an injury timeout. We'll take a timeout as well. 
Another Central Valley Medical Center timeout from orthopedics to pediatrics. You can trust CVMC. One of the best tickets in town will always be activities at our local schools. Athletic events, concerts, and plays. You can always count on an enjoyable time. Our children are the future. Let's give them all the encouragement we can. Go to a game, hear a concert, see a play. Utah Heritage Credit Union. Together we grow. Federally insured by NCUA. Online at utahheritagecu.org. Wilson in motion for the Badgers. The Badgers going to hand it off to Lambert. Lambert trying to get to the left edge and does get the first down down the sidelines. Tiptoes and picks up a few extra yards. Nice run by Spencer Lambert. You know, that's a that's a big call right there because, oh. you know, you've had second down and third down that you know, went for very short yardage, and then you sweep the ball out to the, the left side of the field, and Tillman's good. I wasn't sure he was going to get the edge. He does, turns it up the sideline, picks up a big first down. Georgia showing blitz here. Donovan resets. Badgers have four wideouts, two left, two right. Lambert in the backfield. Donovan, quick pass out in the flats. It's going to be caught out there by Tyreek Carter. Carter is going to be short of the first down, pick up of about five, bring up second and five. You know, it's a really good throw. I think Donovan Smith's starting to settle in a little bit, and he's making some good, clean throws. He could have a big game today. And some quick reads, too, because Georgia has been able to uh, get some pressure on him. I think at this point we can look past that shoulder injury. I think he's, he's ready to play. I think you're so. right. Play action. Crossing round right in the middle. Intended once again for Carter, but incomplete. Good defensive play. That was a play great defensive time. play. I didn't see who it was, but he just reached in with that right hand and knocked the ball away before uh, Tyreek could. Yeah, it was, it was number 19, Ja'Cory Walker, um, out of, out of River, Riverdale, Georgia. Um, safety. So. Another big third down here, third and four for the Badgers. Again, Lambert's in the backfield. Two wide out, split wide to the right. Quick play in and out of the hands of Wilson. You don't see that. No, you Maybe don't. just a little bit behind him. You don't. And that's a scary one, too, because it went through the hands off the shoulder pad straight up in the air, and that's that's a pick six recipe waiting to happen there. So fourth down, the Badgers going to go for it here as they bring in Peua. Peua at the tight end will go to the right side of the formation. And I don't think this is a bad move. You're, no. you're a little deep for a field goal. You're too close for a punt. You need four yards for the first down. Um, if they turn it over, they don't give up much. So Lambert and Tillman in the backfield as Tillman has checked in. We will not see Hiram Boren today. He is not suited. Pulled a hamstring in the walkthrough yesterday morning. Donovan, quick pass on the sidelines, in and out of the hands, incomplete. No, no, no he caught it. Oh, they say he caught it? He caught it. I, oh, they did. Number 80. Wow. I thought I saw that on the on the ground. Solo P tap. Solo, good catch, buddy. Yeah, that was a great catch right at the sideline. I, th I thought he got knocked out I did as well, so great catch. That's the end of the first quarter of play. The Badgers lead at 7 nothing, but the Badgers are driving, getting close to that red zone. We'll be back with the second quarter right after this. At MTCC, we're more than just internet people. We're the Connecting Your Life people. For the past 115 years and counting, MTCC has been the local industry leader in connecting people and businesses by providing professional service with the best options in technology. If you need phone, TV, or internet service for your home or business, come see the experts at MTCC. Call or text us today at 435-835-2929. MTCC, connecting your life since 1907. That's the rock here. The food nanny. Caleb Scott here. Family. Hey, everybody. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account of My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, your car, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. 
live sports coverage of the Snow Badgers on KMDN. Welcome out to, once again to Millersville, Georgia. Snow College Badgers leading 7-0 over the Georgia Military College Bulldogs. Gary Chedester and Nate Johnson with you. At the end of one quarter, Snow College 7 and Georgia nothing. As we check that Utah Heritage Credit Union scoreboard. Utah Heritage Credit Union is your local credit union with offices in Moroni, Mount Pleasant. My favorite branch, the Ephraim Branch and Gunnison. Proud to support Snow College. First and 10 for the Badgers. Handoff goes to Lambert once again, and Lambert gets forward for a gain of a couple. Well, I apologize to those watching. Um, a tent was put up here in the front, in the close corner, so if the, if the pass is down this side of the end zone, you probably won't see it. <laughs> and we're going to have a hard time seeing <laughs> so yardage as well. Hopefully we'll keep uh, the far side of the field as the play so you can watch those watching from home. It'll be second down and eight for the Badgers. Lambert, low man in the backfield. Peleula in motion from left to right. Donovan back on oh, the line. Has some room to run. Scrambles out. Goes down that left sideline and picks up maybe a yard or two. Where did the monkey go? Out of bounds at about the 20. Yeah, this is the left three. side. 22, 23. So it's going to be third and seven. So he doesn't pick up anything. Third down. So the Badgers with two wide outs split wide to the right. Donnie in shotgun formation. Looks back to the sidelines to get the play call. Lambert moves from the right to the left of Smith. Long snap count. One second on the play clock. Donnie looks in the end zone. Now he's going to scramble out, throw to the end zone, back of the end zone. Great pass hit. is caught by Wilson. Jared Wilson with the touchdown from 21 yards, was it? Yes. So I had to stand up to see to see over the tent. Um, Donnie made a great run and throw right there. He's on the move to the right side, and he had to throw that needle into the far corner of the end zone. It was actually a really nice pass. That happens at 13:29 remaining here in the first half. So the Badgers score in the first quarter. They score in the second quarter. The extra point is up, and the extra point is good. So the Badgers get once again into the MACU end zone. Show your school pride with the Snow College debit card from Mount America Credit Union, available now at the Ethan Branch. We'll be back with the kickoff in 30. CO Building Systems in Ephraim manufactures a complete line of metal roofing and accessories. And here are just a few reasons why you should buy from CO. First, we offer lower prices. Second, CO offers top quality products, which can be custom cut to fit your needs. Third, they offer quick turnaround time on all orders. You can pick up at the plant or they'll ship the materials to you. For a free estimate and more information, contact CO Building Systems in Ephraim. Toll free, 800-262-5347 or online at cobuildings.com. Does it go up? No. The station for Snow College Sports. That's trying to talk to me. I'm trying to run a show here, Matt. <laughs> hey. <laughs> is it not enough? I'm running the scoreboard. I'm running the commercials. You know, all you have is the camera. He's yeah. like a man in the game. You know, he's, he's just cussing storm, and his wife's going to be mad at him. And, you know, we, we're giving him a hard time. What do you do? Kiesler with the kickoff, a high kick, and not too often you see that, but a fair catch is signaled for. I thought he had room to run, but a uh, fair catch signaled for. I did, too. I was kind of surprised that he took took the fair catch in the end zone. Um, I guess he saw something we didn't. Yep. So they're going to put it at the 25-yard uh, line, I guess. First and 10. So the Badgers, two possessions, two touchdowns. Uh, the last one, a 21-yard pass from uh, Donnie Smith to Jared Wilson. The point after was good. And the Badgers now lead it 14-0 as we check that Utah Heritage Credit Union scoreboard. Thanks to our sponsors that uh, make this broadcast possible. And we'll run those down for you. Cooper hands it off. And the Badgers have solved some things on that first from that first possession as there were three defensive players to meet... Uh, Walker right in the backfield. Yeah. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage is all. 
Yeah, there was, there was no no game. Uh, I wish there went out a second 10, third 10, second 10. Second 10 now. Walker still back there with uh, Cooper. Chip Cooper, the quarterback from Sylvester, Georgia. On a second and 10, Badger shuffle on that defensive line. Handoff once again to Walker. Walker this time bounces it to the outside. Ooh, nice open field tackle out there, however. Gosh, that was almost like a Clark Madden again. spin. I think it was Clark. Alex was Clark. It was almost like a Madden spin. Took the first hit and rolled right off it and kept going up the field. He's, he's a strong back. A gain of five, that's out to the 30, so it's going to be third and five. Badgers just getting set here on defense. Trey Swanigan on that far side on the defensive end. Man in motion for Chip Cooper. Cooper back to pass. Under some pressure. He's hit from behind. The ball's loose, and the Badgers have come up with it. Jacob Butters is going to come up with the fumble recovery. And that's, that's a big play for him as his parents made the trip down to Georgia as well, and so he gets to show off to mom and dad a little bit. Uh, great, great pursuit. Was that Swanigan that came from the far sideline to yeah, force the fumble? 43, yeah. Yep, Cuthbertson again. 43, Is that, did he cause another fumble as well? Uh, I don't think he did, but he had an interception and a fumble last week. Last week. But Cuthbertson has been on fire. He has been. But a nice recovery by Jacob Butters to come up with the ball for the Badgers, who have it first and 10 at the 26. So a short field here for Snow College and a chance to really do some damage here. Yeah, and I would, I would imagine Coach Erickson's going to go in the air on this first play and um, capitalize on that turnover really quick. A.J. Tillman in the backfield with Smith. And the play clock ran down. Did they take a timeout? No. Nope. So the Badgers penalized. They just took way too long to get that play I, I do that's a, mm, did they chop the, the clock? Because that's a turnover, so it should have started on a chop. Well, you, you're using clock terms that nobody else knows. Oh, that's true. Because you're the clock that's guy. That's true. I'm the idiot that nobody ever gets to see at home. <laughs> that's right. Wilson in motion from right to left. Smith back to pass. Under a little pressure. Rolls out to the right. Buys some time. Does not get rid of it. And he's sacked all the way back to the 40-yard line. A huge loss. It was, uh, looks like, Javion, Javon Lean. Uh, you know, the sophomore defensive tackle that just stayed pursuit with Donovan and uh, came up with the sack. Javon Lynn, 5'10", 308. Yeah. That's, that's a man. A man, man. First and 25 for the Badgers. Donovan back to pass. That's a great screen. Screen pass. Lambert breaks a tackle. Flag is thrown. Looks like we're going to get a hold. That's going to come back. But we have a second flag down here on the 50. So that might be a uh, uh, roughing the passer. So we might have offsetting penalties here. Potentially, yeah. So we're going to sort it out. And again, the, uh, the referee. Hands to the face, number 97 on the defense. Also a hold on zero white. They offset, replay third down. Okay. Zero white? That would be hard. We don't have a zero. I, mm, is it 88? <laughs> I, I don't know, but we do not have a zero. Correction, it's second down. Yeah. I bet it's, I bet it's 88, the receiver, because he was out here on the hold. Eight. Or eight, yeah. All right, so second down and long for the Badgers. Play action. Donovan going to the corner. He's got a man out there. King, he almost pulled it in with one hand, but cannot. He did. He, Shandon King had a hand on it, but it comes up incomplete. He did. He had it in the right hand, and, and as he was trying to cup it up in, it, it got knocked away. I don't know if that was seen on the camera because of this tan right here, but it would have been pretty if he would have come out the catch. Not much we can do about it. Nope. We're just glad to be here in Milledgeville, Georgia. Yes, we are. We're glad to have uh, some video. And, of course, we've got radio on KMTI AM 650. That's true. I guess for those that are just listening, Badgers are up 14 to nothing right now. 
Donovan back to pass, steps up, throws a crossing right, pass is going to be caught. And by Amir Magruder, it's going to be way short of the first down, but we're in four down territory here. A oh, field goal, field goal coming on. So the Badgers going to try a field goal here with the 14 nothing lead. Kiesler will kick it out of the uh, hole by Max Barker. This is going to be a 42 yard field goal attempt. Good conditions here, a little bit of wind at his back. Snap is good, the placement's good, the kick has got plenty of distance, and the kick is good! A 42-yard field goal by the Badgers, and they are able to capitalize on the turnover. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this. Sam Pete Steel in Moroni was founded in 1994 and is one of the major steel construction companies in the Intermountain West specializing in structural steel fabrication and erection. Sam Pete Steel's impressive portfolio includes the Hale Theater in Sandy and structures on the campuses of the University of Utah, BYU, and UVU. Sam Pete Steel in Moroni, where their motto is done right and on time at 685 East Main in Moroni. Call 800-261-1026, 800-261-1026, or sampetesteel.com. The voice of the Snow Badgers. Hey, And welcome back once again to Milledgeville, Georgia. The Badgers have added another three points on a 42-yard field goal by Kiesler for Snow College, Casey Kiesler. And the Badgers lead it now 17-0 as we check that Utah Heritage Credit Union scoreboard. Badgers got the uh, turnover at the 26-yard line, but were unable to pick up the first down, but they were still able to get points on the board. And now lead at 17-0. Yeah, we always feel good about anything turnover-wise if you can come over with points, and so that's a good feel. Nice kick is going to be carried into the end zone, and the Bulldogs will not try to run it out. They will start first and 10 at their own 25-yard line once again. So the Bulldogs... At their own 19, their own 25, and again at their own 25, the Badgers started at their own 19, their own 34, and the GMC 26. So good field position so far for Snow. Yeah, and, and you know what, honestly, special teams has played, played great up, up to this point. Um, has not given up any big plays on the home returns, so. So Chip Cooper comes back out once again with Jamarian Walker in the backfield with him. First and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Badgers move on the defensive line. Hand off to Walker. Walker, not much there, but he stays alive in the backfield. Now finds a small hole and picks up a couple of yards. Arlington Williams in on that stop. Also out there defensive, Tristan Sevelio. And Solomon Longi in the middle of that defensive line. Second down and seven after the game of three. Cooper has two men in the backfield, brings the fullback in motion. And off to Walker once again. This time he's hit in the backfield. And a great defensive effort by Demarion Holloway for Snow College. Yeah, and that's what we talked about earlier in the day was that they're very run heavy. They do Demarion Walker quite a bit. Um, and when you only play the run, it makes it easy for defense because they can crowd up the line and, and bottle up the holes. That time Holloway came from his linebacker position. And actually came from the weak side and did. just followed the play and able to make the tackle. Is Cooper throw it here, you think, or is he going to just read it and run? I think he got it. Third and 11. Walker's in motion. They're going to maybe try to pass to him. Now they set up the screen on the far sidelines. Badgers read it well. Who is there first for Snow College? Cameron Mamalis. Yes. Great job by Mamalis to read that and just get in the backfield. Yeah, he's covering the receiver and saw the screen set up on the far side of the field and, and made it in, you know, made the, uh, the adjustment. Great open field tackle. So it's going to bring up fourth and ten in a punting situation here for the uh, Bulldogs. Yes. Uh, I think he's got shoes on. Oh, no, he's got cleats on. Never mind. High snap. Left-footed kick is a beautiful spiral. Going back and fumbling the ball. It's still loose. And the Badgers might have I think they lost, lost it. it. I think they may have lost it. Yep, they did. Boy, uh, 
that time, Spencer Lambert was back to receive. He signaled for fair catch, and it looked like the wind started to hold it up just a little bit. He had to come up, and rather than just get away and let it bounce, he tried to field it. He did, and then he came off the top of the knee and bounced right back to the, the kicking team. Um, obviously, the ball got bounced around quite a bit under the pile, but the, yeah, Georgia came up with us. That's unfortunate. So the Bulldogs take over first and 10 at the Snow 36-yard line. Defense back out there on the field. And they'll need to try to come up with a stop here. We need life for the Bulldogs. Cooper, empty backfield. As they send Walker, who's normally in the backfield with him, to the slot to the right. Now Walker comes in motion. Cooper rolls out to the right, or left. Gets away from the defense, spins, stays on his feet, spins again, and then gets hit hard by Fordham Parks. But that's going to be enough for the first down, but there is a flag on the play. There is a flag. It looks like it's a holding on the offense, so it's going to come back off or not. Yes, it is. Holding on the uh, offense is going to, instead of picking up what looked to be a first down, and bring up second and uh, first and 20. Georgia military fans aren't too happy about no. that call. Well, they haven't had much to cheer about. No, and Chip Cooper made a great run to pick up some good yardage. And I hate to see that go, go away. He is an elusive quarterback. Oh. You know, he's just bouncing off you know, defenders and, and spin moves everywhere and picking up yards where he needs to. New running back in the backfield is uh, Larry Lane Jr., Along with Walker still there. Cooper, long snap count. He's going to run the option to the right. Keeps it. Turns it upfield. Breaks a tackle. And he's going to get a big chunk of those yardage back before he's taken down by Alex Clark. He sure did. It looks like uh, about eight to go, seven to go. Yeah, they're marking down at the 33-yard line. So second and... A long six, a short seven. How's that? That works. So a second down coming up here for the Bulldogs. Both teams look to the sidelines for the plays coming in. Badgers use three players to signal the plays in. George Military just won. And off straight ahead, Walker. Walker, nice pause to wait for uh, something to open up. Yeah, nice pick up of that, too. Brooks Esplin came in and made a tackle. You know, what surprised me, Gary, is with as elusive as this quarterback is, that they do not throw the ball. Yeah. Um, the, the defense is so focused on the run that it, it's you think the pass is open, but... So Walker, low man in the backfield here with Cooper. Trips split wide to the left. On a big third down and three. I would imagine this might be four down territory here for the Bulldogs. Hand off to Walker. Walker to the right side. Looks like he has the first down. Yes. He does. Yep. That's a good play call. Play call. That's... Uh, He's, if you can get him one on one, he's, oh. he's going to pick up the extra yard. So it's going to be hard to bring him down one on one. Yeah. Yeah, and so if you can get to the edge and get matched up against the corner, he, he's going to get the advantage on that. I, I would assume. And he is out of the game right now. They've come in with uh, Taquan Jones. So the Cubs going to keep the. Cooper, looked like he was going to run now, passes, and he's got the man wide open out of the backfield. That's Taquan Jones, who we just mentioned, yeah. and he's going to have the touchdown. Yeah, and that's, and that's what I was wondering, is as loose of the back as he is, uh, running a quarterback as he is, that these short little passes should be open, um, which it was right there. Was well, that about a 21-yard pass? It was. So both teams, 21-yard pass plays for touchdowns. 
That one from Cooper to Jones. The extra point is on the way. It's up and good. So Georgia Military has gotten on the board and cut the Badger lead down to 10. We'll take this opportunity for a timeout. We'll be back with the kickoff in 30 seconds. I didn't realize just how much of my kids' schoolwork is online. They use the Internet to do their homework, take tests, and turn in papers. And with four kids all trying to get their schoolwork done at the same time, our home Internet has to be reliable. With our new Centracom Internet... They can do their homework at the same time. <laughs> now they can't use lousy internet as an excuse for not getting their homework done. Sign up for Centricom Internet Service with speeds up to one gig. Go to Centricom.com today. You're listening to the Snow College Sports Station. KSTI! Welcome back once again to Milledgeville, Georgia, as we get set for the uh, kickoff. The Bulldogs get in the end zone after the turnover by the Badgers. The Badgers fumbled the punt, right. and Georgia Military is able to capitalize on that and pick up a 21-yard touchdown pass from Cooper to Jones. This kickoff is going to go into the end zone and out of the end zone, and the Badgers will take it at their own 25-yard line. That's probably a good safe move. Um, let's just start playing by now. You know, you wonder what kind of adjustments the defense is going to make uh, next series because it looks like Georgia's found a, a little bit of an edge, potentially, right? And so is, is Snow going to stay with what they're doing? Are they going to make a little adjustment on that defense to cover the middle of the field? Well, they brought in Jones and ran him out of the backfield, and he was open right down the middle of the scene. He was. So Lambert back in at the running back position in the backfield. Badgers go with four wideouts, two to the left, two to the right. Donovan Smith looks to the sidelines. Bulldogs show blitz. Here they come. Pass out in the flats is going to be caught by Ayo Shotamide King, and he's going to be very close to the first down. Looked like the defense was going to go for the interception, and King came up with the pass. Well, he's, he's tall. Uh, he's got some really good hands, and so that's, that's a great play. And honestly, because the defense went for the interception. That was on out of first down. We start at the 25. The ball's on the 35-yard line. It should be first down. There we go. Chains are just very chains, slow. Chains are taking the time. Hand off to Lambert. Lambert trying to get to the outside. Mm. Not much there. And no. does not get back to the line of scrimmage. No, I actually lost about three on that. Badgers running the ball and trying to pick up their yardage there, but that's going to be a loss of six. All the way back inside the 30-yard uh, line at the 29. the tight end on the right side of the formation. Twins out to the left. Handoff goes to A.J. Tillman to the short side of the field. Looks up field, picks up the yardage that they lost, and another yard or two. Do we have a flag? No, we have a, a helmet come oh, off. Oh, yeah. Sione Tai loses the helmet, so he has to come off. Clock running now, 36-yard line. 346 remaining here in the first half. It's been a quick, quick first half. Going the first half, 17 your score. And a third down opportunity for the GMC Bulldogs. Big third down here, third and nine. Badgers trying to keep this drive alive and maybe put some more points on the board. And do we have a timeout? Delay again. Yep. Too much time. Instead of third and nine, it's going to be third and 14. Actually, they're called false start, but either way, it's a five-yard penalty. And it sure makes that third down a lot more difficult to pick up here because I don't think you're in four-down territory in your own side of the 50 here. Bulldog, show blitz once again. They come. Donovan goes down the sidelines. Passes over the head and complete. They intended that time for a near Magruder. And defense did a good job of just standing up Magruder down the field. They did there. They were kind of really small. I think he's hoping for a little bit of a contact right here with the ball. So, so far, they said that he wasn't going to get that call. 
So the Badgers looking at their first punt of the game. At 3-11 remaining here in the first half. But the Bulldogs should get good field position here. Snap is good. Kiesler gets the kick away. It's a good punt. Nice high kick. Apparently got lost in the sun, but it takes kind of a neutral bounce to the sidelines. And it'll be marked down at the 25. You know, if your if only punt is three minutes left in the half, <laughs> That's you know, good. You're, you're doing all right. So, I'm out. Defense needs to step it up here and keep Georgia without some points. Go in the locker room up 10. So first and 10 at the 25-yard line for the Bulldogs. Is Deuce coming up here at halftime? We, we I, I've been fighting him a couple of times, and, and I think he's scared. I think we have to just go get him. Maybe I'll just go get him. Make him come up and tell us some dirty secrets about his dad. Low snap. Cooper gets it. Now he's going to run the draw. Gets away from the Roger and picks up a good yardage out over the 30 to the 31, 32-yard line. He is a good runner. He reads the field really well, Gary. He, he does. Runs, you know, he's looking at that read option a lot, pulling it back out of the running back, taking it himself, and he, he just sees the field really, really well. Second down, actually a gain of just five after they mark it. Second and five. Hand off to Walker. Walker straight ahead. He has the first down. Spin, stays on his feet. Finally taken down by Elijah Wilson. But that's going to be enough for the first down. Two minutes and 15 seconds remaining here in the first half. Ball at the 37-yard line of Georgia Military. You know, they got two different runners out there. You've got, you got just very well up the middle, back, yeah. Jones back in. You've got an elusive quarterback. Hand off to Jones straight ahead. Jones picks up about three, maybe four yards, taken down at the 45-yard line. Yeah. And is Georgia going to take a timeout? We're going to take a timeout as well. This would be a Central Valley Medical Center timeout from orthopedics to pediatrics. You can trust CVMC. In the days of the mountain men, Cache Valley, Utah became a central gathering place for trappers and explorers. This enterprising spirit of community continues today at Cache Valley Bank with locations and services throughout Utah, including three branches right here in San Pete County. No matter your mountain, they want to see you reach the top. They're sent for Utah's financial outfitter. Let's keep that heritage alive. Together, discover Cash Valley Bank. Mountains await. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. I'm John Sorensen. I'm a general surgeon here at Central Valley Medical Center in Utah. For the last 29 years, I've been involved in the uh, U.S. Army Medical Corps. I've been for the last 15 years. When I got back, I decided I wanted to work in a smaller community and take care of patients. Nephi fits that bill very nicely. The people are wonderful. I think all of my experiences have contributed to making me a better physician. I'm interested in continuing to improve myself and my skills here in Nephi. You're listening to the Snow College Sports Station. Second down and seven. Back to pass is Cooper. Pass over the middle is incomplete. Intended out there for uh, Jalene Flood. You know, Flood? Flood? Mm -hmm. You know what I was, I was, just, I was watching from home wanting to know how big this offensive line is. I'm looking at their stats here. you got a kid that's 300, 377, 337, 327. These are not small offensive linemen, and they just wear down defenses. Walker's checked back in in the backfield on a big third down here for the Bulldogs. Badgers showing blitz. They're coming with everybody. Cooper's going to keep it straight up the middle. Breaks a tackle. Still on his feet. He could go all the way, and he will. What a great run by Chip Cooper as the Badgers were bringing the house, and he waited for the rush to go past him, and then he takes it into the end zone. A 59-yard touchdown run. He did. So what happened is, is the, the line opened up right in the center, and I don't know if our linebackers also were containing on the outside, but there was a hole about as big as a truck. And he saw it, and he exploded it, and went the house. Broke one tackle on his way, and the extra point coming up here with a minute 32 remaining. 
The extra point is up, and the extra point is good. And the lead has been cut to 17-14. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this. I thought there was only one way to do college. I knew I needed training to set me up for a great career, but I didn't have four years. Snow helped me discover that college doesn't have to be about sitting in classes, counting down the hours. They showed me a way to get the edge I needed and fast. The best part was with their low-cost programs and tuition assistance, I didn't have to go into debt. I was able to earn my certificate and start working right away. Snow College. This is college. The pride of the Badgers. A-M-T-I. Gary Chedister and Nate Johnson with you in Milledgeville, Georgia, as the Bulldogs have gotten into the Mountain America Credit Union end zone and made this a ball game here at 17-14. The Open your high sale checking account today. CO Building Systems in Ephraim manufactures a complete line of metal roofing and accessories. And here are just a few reasons why you should buy from CO. First, they offer lower prices. Second, CO offers top quality products which can be custom cut to fit your needs. Third, they offer quick turnaround time on all orders. You can pick up at the plant or they'll ship the materials to you. For a free estimate and more information, contact CO Building Systems in Ephraim. Toll free, 800-262-5347 or online at cobuildings.com. Sand Pete Steel in Moroni was founded in 1994 and is one of the major steel construction companies in the Intermountain West specializing in structural steel fabrication and erection. Sand Pete Steel's impressive portfolio includes the Hale Theater in Sandy and structures on the campuses of the University of Utah, BYU, and UVU. Sam P. Steele in Moroni, where their motto is done right and on time at 685 East Main in Moroni. Call 800-261-1026, 800-261-1026, or sampetesteel.com. I didn't realize just how much of my kids' schoolwork is online. They use the Internet to do their homework, take tests, and turn in papers. And with four kids all trying to get their schoolwork done at the same time, our home Internet has to be reliable. With our new Centracom Internet, they can do their homework at the same time. <laughs> Now they can't use lousy internet as an excuse for not getting their homework done. Sign up for Centricom internet service with speeds up to one gig. Go to Centricom.com today. In the days of the mountain men, Cache Valley, Utah became a central gathering place for trappers and explorers. This enterprising spirit of community continues today at Cache Valley Bank with locations and services throughout Utah, including three branches right here in San Pete County. No matter your mountain, they want to see you reach the top. They're Central Utah's financial outfitter. Let's keep that heritage alive. Together, discover Cash Valley Bank. Mountains await. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. I'm John Sorensen. I'm a general surgeon here at Central Valley Medical Center in Nephi. For the last 29 years, I've been involved in the U.S. Army Medical Corps and deployed four times in the last 15 years. When I got back, I decided I wanted to work in a smaller community and take care of patients. Nephi fits that bill very nicely. The people are, are wonderful. I think all of my experiences have contributed to making me a better physician. I'm interested in continuing to improve myself and my skills here in Nephi. The home of Snow Badger Sports. KMTI! Is that the same music yeah. they were just playing? Yeah, well, that's what was funny. Is our <laughs> they were playing the exact same songs our intro came on, and I almost thought it was going to start talking. Yeah, that was uh, kind of funny. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, welcome back. Sorry the all the uh, problems that we've, we've incurred here. We had, uh, for some reason, our internet connection went down yeah, on everything. It went down on phones, cell phones yeah. and everything. So. And uh, we lost the audio. And, of course, I had my phone turned uh, face down so I didn't see the uh, text and the phone call from Doug Barton back at uh, KMTI. But I think we've got everything running back once again uh, for the, uh, the broadcast, the, the video feed. I just worked oh. on that during the timeouts. I think that should be working once again on YouTube.com. So yep. apologies to anybody that uh, was tuned in, missed it. I hope you come back. And, and so honestly, the reason we got the video back was, was what reason, Gary? You're, you're that good, yeah, right? You're, I, that's, that's, what I thought. <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> Yes, I am. Uh, I'm that full of it, too. I love it. A yep. couple of scores around the, around the conference or the, uh, the yep. NJCA right now. There's only three games going on right now. We have Lackawanna over uh, Sussex County at the end of the third quarter, 31-10. 
Um, and then the other game that's playing right now is Independence and Iowa Western, which we'll keep an eye on that score. 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh, I guess a couple more then that just popped up. Uh, Coffeeville is, is up on Ellsworth, 7 nothing after the first. And Highland, Kansas is up on Gordon's Fine Arts, who we've seen a lot over the last couple of years, which we don't ever want to see again from a play perspective. You know, and I Seven think there's two. more than one that plays football. And that's, we, and that's possible. We passed a Gordon, uh, Gordon's Fine Arts uh, um, Sports Academy here in Georgia. Okay. And, okay. and the one that we played was from Oklahoma. Now, well, I, I know there's a couple of community Christians around right. the country, too, with, with Detroit and California. We were obviously supposed to play the teams out of California. never happened. Um, the, the Gordon's Fine Arts that, that we played those couple of years was – it was just hard to watch from both ends. I'm, I'm serious, you know, and I don't mean that disrespectfully to them. They were just, oh, that, that was it, was a, it was a rough game to, to broadcast, to watch, to run play clock. It, it, was, it was tough. It was tough, tough for them. I mean, they came yeah. all the way from Oklahoma on a school bus. They did. And uh, they that's did. that's a long ways to go to, to play a football and game, so, for but, sure. But the fact that that's in the second quarter, 7 nothing for Highland, um, so Highland is a very low sc- I, I mean, they keep it low. Now, yeah. they were playing last week uh, in Kansas, just up the road from where we were playing at Dodge City. And so they had the windy conditions as well. But that game finished 3 nothing, I think, or 7 yeah, nothing. It was a yeah. very low-scoring game. Very defensive heavy for, for Highland. So. And, and they beat Garden City, who uh, was a team that was ranked. Yeah. So uh, they're, they're no slouch, and, and they... they they play a tough game there. So, welcome back. We finally got everything running. Thanks for uh, joining us here. We're in Milledgeville, Georgia, as we check the uh, Utah Heritage Credit Union scoreboard. Uh, Utah Heritage Credit Union is your local credit union with offices in Moroni, Mount Pleasant, Ephraim, and Gunnison, and they are proud to support Snow College. And checking that scoreboard, Snow College leads at 17-14. We'll be back with the scoring summary right after this. I thought there was only one way to do college. I knew I needed training to set me up for a great career, but I didn't have four years. Snow helped me discover that college doesn't have to be about sitting in classes, counting down the hours. They showed me a way to get the edge I needed, and fast. The best part was with their low-cost programs and tuition assistance, I didn't have to go into debt. I was able to earn my certificate and start working right away. Snow College. This is college. We all need a strong support team in sports and in day-to-day life. We have a trusted strong support team at Intermountain Stampy Valley Hospital. For up-to-date health care tips and guidelines, join our Facebook page and go to our website. From our physicians to our nursing staff, our technicians, and other specialized health care professionals, our team is ready to provide the best quality care for our friends, neighbors, and local athletes in Stampy County. Intermountain Stampy Valley Hospital, keeping quality health care close to home. One of the best tickets in town will always be activities at our local schools. Athletic events, concerts, and plays. You can always count on an enjoyable time. Our children are the future. Let's give them all the encouragement we can. Go to a game, hear a concert, see a play. Utah Heritage Credit Union. Together we grow. Federally insured by NCUA. Online at utahheritagecu.org. At MTCC, we're more than just Internet people. We're the Connecting Your Life people. For the past 115 years and counting, MTCC has been the local industry leader in connecting people and businesses by providing professional service with the best options in technology. If you need phone, TV, or Internet service for your home or business, come see the experts at MTCC. Call or text us today at 435-835-2929. MTCC, connecting your life since 1907. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Family. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift card, concert tickets. All for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. 
the home of Snow Badger Sports. KMTI! And welcome back once again to Millageville, Georgia. Gary Chedister and Nate Johnson with you. Snow College Badgers lead it 17-14. The Badgers led it one time 17 to nothing. So they, they scored 17 straight, then they've given up 14 straight. The Badgers got on board first with a, an eight, or a four yard Spencer Lambert run. The point after was good. That happened at 8-14 in the first quarter. At 13-29 in the second quarter, the Badgers got on with a 21-yard uh, pass from Donovan Smith to Jared Wilson. The point after was good, and they led 14 to nothing. And then a 42-yard uh, field goal by uh, Kiesler made it 17 to nothing. Then the Badgers gave up a 21-yard pass play, uh, Chip Cooper to Jones. The point after was good, 17-7. That happened at 5:07 in the second quarter. Then with a minute 32 in the second quarter, Chip Cooper on a 59-yard touchdown run, and the point after was good, making it 17-14. That's where we uh, are at this current point. So the Badgers touchdown, touchdown field goal on their first three possessions. Yes. Then they fumbled the punt, yep. and then it went downhill from there. Then they punted, they punted, and they turned it over on downs. Georgia Military fumbled on their first two possessions, punted on their third, then they scored two touchdowns. So it's really been a game of, uh, of, of momentum shifts and, and some runs here. Yeah, and, and you know, Coach Erickson does a really good job at coming out in the third quarter after halftime and getting his teams fired up and ready to go, and I, and I don't anticipate there being anything different here. Um, I imagine they're good, that the players are going to come out and ready to play in the third quarter. Uh, but they they got to be able to run the ball. Um, I and, and, and we're just not. Um, we're passing the ball really well, actually, but, but we're not getting much momentum on the ground. Now George Milter, on the other end, can only run the ball. They haven't really thrown all that well. They have the one touchdown pass, pass. but it's all been run. Um, run, run, run. And both teams are doing what their strengths are. So. All right. We'll take uh, this opportunity for another timeout here. Uh, thanks to our sponsors that made this broadcast possible. Utah Heritage Credit Union, Sanpe Valley Hospital, Centricom, Manti Telephone, Cash Valley Bank, CO Building Systems, Mountain America Credit Union, Snow College. You're listening to the Snow College Halftime Show, by the way. Sanpete Steel and Central Valley Medical Center. A reminder, we'll have the Little Caesars Player of the Game coming up. For Fresh Pizza Fast, make a pit stop at Little Caesars in Nephi, Ephraim, and also in Gunnison. We'll also have the San Pete Steel Steel Man of the Game, San Pete Steel done right and on time. We'll be back with more on the Snow College Halftime Show. Get a quality education that's affordable and fun at Snow College. Visit snow.edu. CO Building Systems in Ephraim manufactures a complete line of metal roofing and accessories. And here are just a few reasons why you should buy from CO. First, they offer lower prices. Second, CO offers top quality products which can be custom cut to fit your needs. Third, they offer quick turnaround time on all orders. You can pick up at the plant or they'll ship the materials to you. For a free estimate and more information, contact CO Building Systems in Ephraim. Toll free, 800-262-5347 or online at cobuildings.com. San Pete Steel in Moroni was founded in 1994 and is one of the major steel construction companies in the Intermountain West specializing in structural steel fabrication and erection. San Pete Steel's impressive portfolio includes the Hale Theater in Sandy and structures on the campuses of the University of Utah, BYU, and UVU. San Pete Steel in Moroni, where their motto is done right and on time at 685 East Main in Moroni. Call 800-261-1026, 800-261-1026, or sanpetesteel.com. I didn't realize just how much of my kids' schoolwork is online. They use the Internet to do their homework, take tests, and turn in papers. And with four kids all trying to get their schoolwork done at the same time, our home Internet has to be reliable. With our new Centracom Internet, they can do their homework at the same time. <laughs> now they can't use loud the internet as an excuse for not getting their homework done. Sign up for Centricom Internet Service with speeds up to one gig. Go to Centricom.com today. In the days of the mountain men, Cache Valley, Utah became a central gathering place for trappers and explorers. This enterprising spirit of community continues today at Cache Valley Bank with locations and services throughout Utah, including three branches right here in San Pete County. No matter your mountain, they want to see you reach the top. They're sent for Utah's financial outfitter. Let's keep that heritage alive. Together, discover Cash Valley Bank. Mountains await. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. 
I'm John Sorensen. I'm a general surgeon here at Central Valley Medical Center in Nephi. For the last 29 years, I've been involved in the U.S. Army Medical Corps and deployed four times in the last 15 years. When I got back, I decided I wanted to work in a smaller community and take care of patients. Nephi fits that bill very nice. The people are, are wonderful. I think all of my experiences have contributed to making me a better physician. I'm interested in continuing to improve myself and my skills here in Nephi. This is Snow College Sports Action on KFTI. Gary Chedister and Nate Johnson with you in Milledgeville, Georgia. And the Snow College Badgers lead it at halftime, 17-14. Thanks for joining us, and uh, hopefully we can stay on for the entire second half. <laughs> <laughs> That, that would be wonderful. You never know. You never know. You never know. <laughs> so you've had a chance uh, to look at uh, some of the stats provided by uh, Drayson Ball, the sports information director at Snow College. Um, a bit surprising uh, for me, anyway, looking looking at this, uh, how many yards that uh, Georgia military has put up. Yeah, because I feel like Snow has actually dominated the game, but yet looking at the statistics, uh, total yards, Snow College right now has 201 total yards of offense whereas Georgia Military is 254 yards on roughly half as many plays. Yeah, al almost half. Well, a little, I mean, a little over half, but yeah. Yeah, 20, 28 plays for 254 yards. Snow College is at 46 plays for 201 yards. And, and time of possession, too, for Snow College. Uh, way out in front, 35 minutes for Snow College and 27 minutes for, for the Bulldogs. Yeah, maybe that's, that's why I feel like Snow's kind of dominated is because they've had the ball on the field longer. Uh, but from play to play... It's it's kind of leaning more towards Georgia military with with dominance here. I don't want to say dominance. That's 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 wrong. No, they've had a couple of big plays. Yeah. And, and they had a big run by uh, Chip Cooper uh, for the touchdown, and they had the uh, the big pass play. So they they've been able to hit some big plays on Snow College. Not really driven the ball down the field all that well. Uh, except the one time that they finished it in a fumble. They were deep in, in Badger territory, but they yep. turned it over to the fumble. So. Well, and I think that's a big key there. That, that fumble on the punt was a big change in momentum for Georgia military. Uh, they now just scored, came out of a three and out, got the ball right back and scored again, and next thing you know, the momentum's compl completely shifted. So, Any other stats that uh, jump out at you here? Yeah, I mean, right now, you know, Snow College on the passing, receiving yards has 162 yards in the air. Uh, Georgia Military has 68, and a lot of those came from that one pass to score the touchdown. Um, the yards per play is the biggest one for me, right? Snow College right now is 4.37 yards per play, whereas Georgia Military is 9 point, almost just, just over 9 yards a play. And when you have a, an average play that many yards, yeah. it's hard to slow down the momentum. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what Coach Erickson brings out in the second half. How big was that missed field goal at the end of the huge. regulation? Uh, it, it, that, was, that was huge because then, you know, now we're still, you know, Snow College is still up by three. Potentially, from our angle, it looked good. It did. Um, it should be a ball game coming into the half, which changes your mindset of everything. So Snow still has the lead, which is great. Um, they do kick off to Georgia Military. Georgia right. Military is getting the ball. So you think about that. If it's 17-17 getting the ball back, you can now take the lead, whereas now potentially just a, a field goal ties the game. All right. We're going to take this opportunity for another timeout here. We'll be back with the second half kickoff when we return. And uh, thanks for joining us on the Snow College Halftime Show. We'll be back after this. I thought there was only one way to do college. I knew I needed training to set me up for a great career, but I didn't have four years. Snow helped me discover that college doesn't have to be about sitting in classes, counting down the hours. They showed me a way to get the edge I needed, and fast. The best part was with their low-cost programs and tuition assistance, I didn't have to go into debt. I was able to earn my certificate and start working right away. Snow College. This is college. We all need a strong support team in sports and in day-to-day -day life. We have a trusted strong support team at Intermountain Snappy Valley Hospital. For up-to-date health care tips and guidelines, join our Facebook page and go to our website. From our physicians to our nursing staff, our technicians, and other specialized health care professionals, our team is ready to provide the best quality care for our friends, neighbors, and local athletes in Sanpete County. Intermountain Sanpete Valley Hospital. 
keeping quality health care close to home. Your connection for Snow College Sports. A-M-T-I. Gary Chattis, John Mike Johnson with you in Milledgeville, Georgia. Being joined also by uh, Deuce Erickson here. Hey, Deuce, you want to get on? You want to say something? De- Deuce isn't even watching what's happening. He's playing a video game. What? You're at a football game, playing a video football game. Put those on here for just a second. Say hi. All right. Yep, put, put them on there. Hey, your mom might be listening. Your brother, your sister might be listening. So Deuce Erickson joining me here at halftime. So what, what have the Badgers got to do here in the second half to, to win? They just got to execute. Yeah, they, they, they're calling good plays. They're just not executing like they should. Yeah. Okay. We got to run the ball a little bit better? Yeah. Okay. Who are we going to give it to, A.J. Tillman, or are we going to give it to Spencer Lambert? Spencer Lambert. Spencer? He's running pretty good, isn't he? Yeah. All right. Okay, so the Badgers will kick it off. A low line drive kick is going to be fielded at about the five-yard line, out to the 15, the 20. And a nice hit by the Badgers coming up with the uh, tackle is, I don't have him. Yep, don't have a 34. What do you think of that hit, Deuce? Who 34 is? No, I don't. Who's 34? We don't even have him on the roster, see that? Goes 30, 33 and skips and goes to 35. I know. Yeah. You think that's your dad's fault? No. no. Somebody else, though, huh? Yeah. Uh, so, Georgia Military going to have the ball here. Their first possession of the second half, and they have it at the 25 yard line. They'll mark at the 26. On 26 yard line. We apologize. Apparently, lots of network issues. I think we're pushing the Verizon network to its limit here. Hand off to Walker. Walker straight ahead. Picks up four yards out to the 30-yard line. And taken down there. That'll bring up second down and six. Defense playing okay, do you think? Uh, they should just tackle. They're like, no, I'm not tackling. That's why um, Georgia Military has 14 points. They're in the right position, but they're yes. not making the tackles they need to make. Yes. Okay. Have you seen how big that Walker guy is, though? Yes. He's pretty big. Yes. I don't think I could tackle him. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> Second down. Call it seven after the gain of three. Man in motion for Chip Cooper. Play action. Okay. Cooper's going to keep it, and he's taken okay. down in the backfield. Great defensive effort by the Queen Petty. Petty on the tackle. And that's one of the first times they've been able to get Chip Cooper in the backfield. That's a good sign, right? Yeah. So third and eight now. Big third down here for the defense. Try to get off the field, give the offense the ball back once again. You might be out of a job, mate. You know what? He does a better job than I do. Keep him rolling. Again, big third down. Keep an eye on Chip Cooper, the quarterback. Cooper, back to pass, under some pressure, trying to find a hole, he's hit in the backfield, spins, gets back to the scrimmage, maybe even a yard or two, but again in the backfield, Trey Swan again, makes the hit and brings a punting situation. So it's gonna be a punt. Did what they needed to do, right? Three yes. out, force the punt. Okay, what are we going to do coming back with the offense here? Um, they just got to keep stay with their blocks. Okay. Nice high spiral punt. Lambert gets away from it. And it takes kind of a neutral bounce. It's going to come to rest at the 30-yard line. The Badgers will start first and 10 with their first possession of the second half. Okay, so we're going to run the ball to Lambert. The O line just needs to stay on the blocks. That's the key we're looking for here? Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to keep an eye on it. You know who's played really well so far, I think? Alex Clark, and he's from around here on defense. He's, he's done a good job. He has. And we've also gone to, uh, on offense, Shandon King, at wide receiver. He's had some pretty good catches. Yes. His dad's here. Did you know that? He is? His dad is? Yeah. He's from Houston, Texas, but his dad's here to watch wow. the game. That's pretty good. Yeah. So Lambert in the backfield. Badgers first possession here of the second half, leading 17-14. 
Bulldogs show blitz. They come with the blitz. Lambert trying to get to that right side, and that's right where the blitz was going to come from. Very short gain, maybe gain of just one yard for Lambert. And it'll bring up second down and nine. It's been kind of hard to run to the short side of the field, hasn't it? Yes, it has. I feel like they should do it, yeah. Play action? Play action, pass. Okay. <laughs> this is your play action. It's this is your play action, pass, and throw it to number two. All right. Um, well, they hand it off to Lambert. Lambert's going to get about five yards. It's yes. going to bring up third down. Do you lose your phone? Eh. <laughs> eh? Did it go all the way down? Uh-oh. So third and four for the Badgers. I'm going to call it third and five. Badgers need to go third, five yards here to pick up the first down. Lambert in the backfield. Badgers go with two wide out split wide to the left. Payo, the tight end in motion. Hand off. Nope. Play action. And no flag. As Amir Magruder, a lot of contact. He was trying to get his hands up to make the catch, but he can't. And the Badgers go three and out. And so they're going to have to punt it away here. A little bit of a breeze from left to right, so the Badgers do have a bit of a breeze at their back here. Kiesler is back to punt. Good snap. Kiesler takes his time, gets the kick away. It's a good punt. It is a good punt. And a fair catch signal for her. And Georgia Military is going to have it first and 10 at their own 26-yard line. Right where they had it last time. I know. It was crazy. <laughs> Well, pressure on the defense once again, right? Yes. Got to go three and out here. Yep. They got to go one and out. One and out? You want to turn over? They got to get a fumble. They wouldn't go like that in the first half, and then they just let it go. They did pick up two fumbles on their first two possessions of Georgia Military, didn't they? Yes, they did. Gave them a short field on, uh, on one of them that they came up with a field goal on. Yes. Cooper with Walker in the backfield. Two wide out split wide to the left. Hand off to Walker mm -hmm. straight ahead. And Walker gets a couple of yards and then eventually is game tackled and pushed back. Elijah Wilson in on the tackle. Also in on the tackle was Stockton Bramwell from the safety position. But a gain of four for Walker to bring up second down and six. Oh, thanks for catching that. See, that's why he's that's why he's here is to help me with that. Yep. Because it's not the half anymore. Third quarter, how's that? Thanks for catching that. Deuce keeping me honest here. It's a key job. And the Badgers sniff it out. Who was the first person there for the Badgers? That was uh, Tavili Tutama in on the tackle. So is your phone in one piece? Yep. You got it back again? Yep. I'm glad it is. Yeah, you got good case on there. Mm. Oh, good. Boy. You dodged a bullet there. I know. Your mom wouldn't even know, except for we're talking about it on the radio. Yeah, unless she's listening. <laughs> Third and eight. Chip Cooper hands it off to Walker. Walker gets back to the line of scrimmage, a gain of two, and that is about it. So the Badgers do force a three and out and another punt situation. So as exciting as the game started with two touchdowns by the Badgers and a field goal, a um, couple of punts back to back here. In fact, this will be the third consecutive punt. Neither team able to pick up a first down so far here in the second half. Lambert back deep to receive, standing at his 35 yard line. Kick is a high spiral short. Badgers need to get away. In fact, it takes a Badger bounce. 
And the Badgers are going to have great field position here as it goes out of bounds at the 48-yard line of Georgia Military. Yeah. So the Badgers will have it first and 10 at the 48. Their second possession here of the second half. What? Oh, I think Cam brought it up for me. So again, Lambert in the backfield with Donovan Smith. The Badgers go with two wide out split wide to the right. Two wide out split wide to the left. Bulldogs showing blitz from the near side. Pass is going to be out into the flats to uh, Tyreek Carter. Carter immediately taken down. Maybe a gain of one is all. So it'll be second down and nine. Carter comes out. Pea Ua checks back in for the Badgers. Sampson Pea Ua. Still waiting to hear how Ethan Wood is. He had the knee injury and was unable to take any pictures of it last week. So we wish the best for him. Play action. Donovan Smith looks downfield. Got a man open, but he overthrew an incomplete intended for Io Shatamide Keene. Donovan just led King just a little bit too much. Had to bring up third and nine. How much further do Badgers have to get to uh, have it in four down territory here? What do you think, Deuce? Like nine yards. Nine would give them the first down, then they wouldn't have to go for it on fourth. I like your thinking. They just need a miracle. <laughs> God. Pass out on the flats to uh, Shandon King. Shandon King's going to pick up about four. Going to bring up place. fourth and four. What's that? I know what that play is called. Which one? The one they just ran? Yeah. What's that called? That play is called Gold All Stop. It's called what? Gold All Stop. Gold All Stop? Okay. Do we need to run that again? Pick up the first down? Going for it here on fourth for the Badgers. Timeout taken? Oh, we've got an injury on the far sidelines. We'll take a timeout as well, and we'll be back with more right after this. One of the best tickets in town will always be activities at our local schools. Athletic events, concerts, and plays. You can always count on an enjoyable time. Our children are the future. Let's give them all the encouragement we can. Go to a game, hear a concert, see a play. Utah Heritage Credit Union. Together we grow. Federally insured by NCUA. Online at utahheritagecu.org. The voice of the Snow Badgers. A-M-T-I. We're in Millageville, Georgia, where the Snow College Badgers have a three-point lead over the Bulldogs with eight minutes and ten seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Badgers have it fourth and five. Handoff is not going to get the first down. It's close, though. It was close. Uh, I, I don't think he's even. I think he only two, picked two up two out of the five that they needed. Good, good defensive stop by Georgia Military. Forces the turnover on downs. Well, that was fun to talk to Deuce a little bit, wasn't it? Yeah. He had to do a lot of work to convince him to, to get on, and then he didn't want to get off. Then he didn't want to get off. He did, he did good. <laughs> good job, Deuce. Deuce Erickson, who's made a couple of trips with us this year. You know, what a fun opportunity for a young man like that to be able to, to spend one-on-one -on -one time with a lot of these players and get to know them and uh, have them into his home. Like, he's, he's living a really good opportunity in his life. So, yep. so Georgia Military has the ball, first and ten. Here's the jet sweep. Trying to get to the outside, not much there. Now reversing oh, field, and he is going to lose a ton of yards. Yeah, that's trying that's to make something big out of nothing at all is Larry Lane Jr., and that's going to lose a ton of yards. Yeah, and that's and that's one of those plays that the coach just shakes their heads up. You know, you, you didn't get anything, but then to turn back and run run back, you you now lost eight yards instead of two yards, and uh, and it's a big big loss. And you've got an injury out there, too. Uh, Georgia military player injured and very slow getting up. Unfortunately, we do have that timeout, so we'll take another timeout on the field. We'll be back after this. Thank you. 
At MTCC, we're more than just internet people. We're the Connecting Your Life people. For the past 115 years and counting, MTCC has been the local industry leader in connecting people and businesses by providing professional service with the best options in technology. If you need phone, TV, or internet service for your home or business, come see the experts at MTCC. Call or text us today at 435-835-2929. MTCC, connecting your life since 1907. The station for Snow College Sports. KMTS. Well, thank goodness uh, the injured player Ivan Arroyo is able to get up under his own power and get off the field. Hopefully, nothing too serious for him. Yeah. Long loss by Georgia Military. They're looking at uh, what well, is it? Loss of 13. So second 23 now. Yeah. It, it's a long ways to go here. Handoff goes to Walker. Walker stopped up in the backfield. He's finally forced out. Yeah, he took out. a look to by... Georgia Southern wants a late hit out of bounds. Um, their no. their star running back just took a lick by 39, I think. The Queen Petty. No flags. No flags. So that's going to bring up third down and long. Yeah, a lot of, lot of uh, begging over on the far sidelines for that late hit. But no, no flag thrown. So third and very long. Boy, I, I, you got to watch out for this quarterback draw here with uh, Chip Cooper. Cooper, yeah, there it is. Right there. And he turns it up for He's got some room. He's tackled out of bounds. Cuthbertson on that far sideline. So... A game, but short game, and it's not going to be enough for the uh, first down, so that's going to force another punt. You know, the, with, with Cooper's ability, that's a very, it's almost a scary, even like a third and ten, oh, because yeah. he's reading the, the line of scrimmage, and if the hole opens in the middle, he's going to take it. If it's not, he's, he's cutting to the outer edge, and he's fast enough and agile enough to get to, get to the corner. So another punting situation here. Cuthbertson over to the sidelines, and he's taking a breather. The Badgers get a lot of pressure, and then they run over the, the kicker. And he's not going to get a call. I don't think he is. Fans are not happy about that either. He's trying to sell it. I don't think he was hit that hard. No, he wasn't. He's, he is trying to sell the flag. And the crowd is furious that there is no penalty called. But the Badgers are going to get the ball back again at the 20. Yep, right at the 20 yard line. 20. Yeah, the crowd was not happy at all. You had the, what they thought was a late hit on the far sidelines, right in front of the Georgia military bench. Yep. Then you had a little bit of contact on the punter. On the punter. Which usually you'll get that call because they, they try to protect those guys that are very vulnerable, uh, leg in the air, whatever. Um, I was surprised that there wasn't even a five-yard r- running into the kicker right. penalty there. So, Hand off to Lambert. Lambert gets about three. It's going to bring up second and seven. Short kick that brings up second and nine. We've got uh, some of the Georgia military officials coming over and talking with uh, President McKiff. McKiff. Mm-hmm. Pass out in the flats is going to be high, but brought down by Magruder. Magruder turns it upfield, picks up a few. It's going to bring up a third down. Yeah, about what, one or two there. The angle looks like maybe more of a, a two-yard. Yep, second and third and two now. Again, a big first down. Neither team has picked up a first down here in the second half. No, it's been pretty, what, three and out, three and out. I mean, it's... Yeah, the Badgers did go out on down, so a four and out <laughs> on their last <laughs> possession. True. Long snap count. Quick pass, flats once again. Magruder. Magruder gets the first down. Finally wrestled out of bounds, but the Badgers do pick up their first first down here in the second half. You know, that, that pass play was working very well in the first quarter, the first quarter of this game. You know, these little six-yard outs. Um, and I, I almost wonder if Donovan Mitchell or Donovan Smith's going to keep going with that. They substitute Kylon Payne out. Bring in a little bit more size at corner to match up with Magruder. Hand off to Lambert. Lambert trying that left side. Lambert breaks uh, through a little bit of an opening, and he's going to pick up good yardage this time, a big chunk of eight. 
Yeah, and I think that might be the longest run for snow of the day, is it not? I uh, could be. I, I don't have my stats page up anymore. And off to Lambert coming to the near side. Not much there this time. Maybe a gain of a yard is on. They're back to just the line of scrimmage. And he's going to come out. A.J. Tillman checks in for the Badgers. It's this left side of the defense for the Georgia Bulldogs is um, very quick. Yeah, they, they contain really well. It's been stopped every time coming to this side of the field. Big third down here. Third and a long two, a short three. Badgers at the 41-yard line. Handoff, Tillman straight ahead, and Tillman moves the pile. He's got the first down. He sure it's, does. It's close, but I think I think he's got it. Yep. Gosh, he had to earn every bit of it. Oh too. yeah. I love watching both Lambert and Tillman run. They're not the biggest guys out there, but boy, they just do not go down easy. Right. And it's nice to have two, right? You just keep swapping them in and they keep fresh legs. Here's the jet sweep to Overstreet. Overstreet's got a room to run, breaks a tackle, still on his feet, and he's inside of Georgia military territory inside the 30. What a great jet sweep. Overstreet. Quick burst, the hole is there on, the, on the, the right side of the offensive line. What a great, great sweep. Little momentum for the Badgers. And off to uh, Tillman again. And Tillman's going to get a big chunk again. And it looks like Georgia Military is going to call a timeout. We're going to take a timeout as well. This will be this will be a Central Valley Medical Center timeout. From orthopedics to pediatrics, you can trust CVMC. I think it, it does this, Rennes. The Food Nanny. Jalen Scott here. Samry. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account of My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift card, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. The home of the Snow Badgers. KMCF. So College Badgers picking up some first downs on that uh, this drive so far. And Douglas Dentistry uh, first down. Douglas Dentistry and Ephraim should be your first choice in dentistry. And oral health from general to sedation dentistry. Teeth whitening and tooth replacement as well. Badgers have it second down and short. Second and two. A.J. Tillman has picked up some good chunks of yards. Now the Badgers go with an empty backfield. Trips to the right and twins to the left. Man in motion is Overstreet once again. Pass is going to beat Overstreet in the backfield. He turns it up. And he's going to be short of the first down, I believe. Yeah, he's about two and a half yards short of the so first down. So he must have lost a half a yard on that last play. Of course, they passed it to him deep in the backfield. All right, here we are, third and two. So a big third down here, third and two. Tillman, oh, the play action to Tillman. Donnie tries to turn it up, and he's going to be tackled in the backfield. So that's going to bring up a fourth down. And I almost wonder if that play was designed to get the ball back to the middle of the field to give us a really good, clean look at the, the field goal. But it doesn't look like we're going to kick it. It looks like we're going to go for it. So Pei Ua is going to check back in at the tight end on the left side of the formation. Lambert and Tillman in the backfield. Hand off to Lambert. Lambert, not much there, but he finds a bit of an opening. Turns it upfield. Does he it's get the first close. down? It is really close. They gave it to him. And they're going to, yeah, this, this judge on this side is saying, yep, move it. But right. they, ha they haven't signaled it yet. Well, the white hat just signaled it. That's, that's what was weird. Now they've gone clear to the other side of the field for the spot. The, the side judge on this side has it right on the 20-yard line. Yeah. yeah, right on the 20. The judge on the other side, though, is the one that's actually spotted it. So we're going to have to bring the chains all the way across the field here. They've got the white hat over on that far sideline. He's looking at where the ball has been placed. Are they going to bring the chains? I'm not sure. I think the hard part was... Everybody is signaling <laughs> first down. Everybody's saying first down. What was, what's hard is when the, uh, the, the referee, the white hat, 
doesn't make a decision well, right he, away. He or, made a call. He oh. said first down and then is now double-checking himself. And so that's where it's hard for fans is because you made a call and now you're potentially changing your call. Uh, and that's hard. Now, you know what this comes down to? How straight are the lines? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it really does. Yep. And they're going to stretch it out. We've got a, actually a really good view of it here. And it is a first down. That is a first down. He doesn't want to put it, but it's a first down. Yeah. Uh, half a ball. First down. First down, Snow College right at the 20 yard line. A Douglas Dentistry first down, I believe. Douglas Dentistry with in house financing. Show off that smile. 435 283. 3,200. Fourth James first down of the drive here. Chains never lie. <laughs> Chains 10 yards. Well, that was an, an interesting, interesting call. You know, but you say the lines, and, I, and I'll tell you a funny story. So a couple of years ago, we were using the Rhino to push snow off Snow's Field, and if you look, the, the lines are couple, moved. A couple of lines are moved. Because of where we've pushed snow and, and enforce the line so now I've, I've told the story a few times and if we have a break i'll tell you the story what happened in uh, walla walla washington love to hear it <laughs> i still remember that one it was it was pretty funny first and 10 for the badgers right at the edge of the red zone here at the 20 yard line man in motion here comes the jet sweep again but they blow this one dead somebody moved So a new look procedure on the Badger is going to move it back. First and 15 now from the 25-yard line. Badgers were going with that jet sweep once again to uh, DJ Overstreet. Overstreet in the slot to the left side of the formation. Wilson on the right side of the formation for Snow. Back to pass is Donovan Smith. Steps up in the pocket under some pressure. And he's going to go down. All the way back near the 30-yard line. He just so has to break down in coverage all the way around. Seems like the Badgers did this on another trip down here. Mm. Had excellent field position, mm. got it way down there, then got pushed back and set it for a field goal. I think that was two years ago. Well, I, I think th you and I, I were I sitting here baking in the sun the same. I, I thought it was in the first quarter. Second uh, quarter, today. yeah. Today. <laughs> <laughs> so Lambert and Tillman both back in the backfield. Now Lambert goes in motion out of the backfield, and then another flag and another yeah, legal procedure. McFalls went from being really, really happy with the line playing well to now he is really upset. Uh, two false starts in the same series. Oh, Isaac Hawkins was going to go in, but now he comes back. I don't think you want to make Trevor McFalls unhappy. No, I don't think so either. So it's going to be second and what, 23, 24? Clock running down here in the third quarter. We have had no score in the third quarter. Handoff goes to Tillman. Tillman breaks one tackle, stays on his feet. Wrestled down after a gain of five. Yeah, and he took a pretty he, big helmet to back of the helmet shot. He took a really, really heavy uh, shot. And that, he's, that he's, he's done for the day. He's, yep. That's concussion protocol. My guess is Spencer's going to pull him off for the day. He took a shot in the back of the helmet. Um, it should be a helmet-to-helmet -helmet call. And Coach Zach Erickson out on the field trying to get somebody to make that call. And we're going to take this opportunity for a, uh, another timeout here. This is a Central Valley Medical Center timeout from orthopedics to pediatrics. You can trust CVMC. CO Building Systems in Ephraim manufactures a complete line of metal roofing and accessories. And here are just a few reasons why you should buy from CO. First, they offer lower prices. Second, CO offers top quality products which can be custom cut to fit your needs. Third, they offer quick turnaround time on all orders. You can pick up at the plant or they'll ship the materials to you. For a free estimate and more information, contact CO Building Systems in Ephraim. Toll free, 800-262-5347 or online at cobuildings.com. The pride of the Badgers. 
Well, AJ makes it off the field on his uh, own power, but I, well, I hesitate to, to guess. But yeah, but I know Spencer takes those concussions pretty yeah, serious. You, you sure. don't, yeah, you don't want to mess around with that. Why was the clock running during uh, the timeout? Because they, well, <laughs> they, the, the clock stopped for, for medical injury, and so then as soon as the player's back on, he winds the clock again okay. to get it running. So dude, that's, that's correct. All right. We'll take the timeout as well. That's the end of the third quarter. No score in the third quarter at all. We still have a score of 17-14, Snow College. Badgers uh, threatening to get some more points on the board, however. We'll be back with the start of the fourth quarter in 60 seconds. Sam Pete Steel in Moroni was founded in 1994 and is one of the major steel construction companies in the Intermountain West specializing in structural steel fabrication and erection. Sam Pete Steel's impressive portfolio includes the Hale Theater in Sandy and structures on the campuses of the University of Utah, BYU, and UVU. Sam Pete Steel in Moroni, where their motto is done right and on time at 685 East Main in Moroni. Call 800-261-1026, 800-261-1026, or sampetesteel.com. I didn't realize just how much of my kids' schoolwork is online. They use the Internet to do their homework, take tests, and turn in papers. And with four kids all trying to get their schoolwork done at the same time, our home Internet has to be reliable. With our new Centracom Internet, they can do their homework at the same time. <laughs> now they can't use lousy Internet as an excuse for not getting their homework done. Sign up for Centracom Internet service with speeds up to one gig. Go to Centracom.com today. Welcome back as the Badgers on third down here, third and long, go to the corner of the end zone, incomplete. Intended out there once again for DJ Overstreet, who has been kind of the favorite target here in the second half. Yeah, he really has, and, and he's done well. He's made some great catches, and he's run the ball hard and fast, so I don't blame uh, Donnie Smith for going to that, that side of the field. I didn't like the throw. I thought the throw stayed high, um, but this is what it is. Now coming up, a 47-yard field goal attempt here by Kiesler. And he's got the leg. Is it good? That's it is good. good. Kiesler with a 42-yard field goal. That's a great field goal. That is a great field goal. And the Badgers now increase their lead to 20-14 to with 14.46 to go in the fourth quarter. We'll be back with the kickoff in 30 seconds. In the days of the mountain men, Cache Valley, Utah became a central gathering place for trappers and explorers. This enterprising spirit of community continues today at Cache Valley Bank with locations and services throughout Utah, including three branches right here in San Pete County. No matter your mountain, they want to see you reach the top. They're Central Utah's financial outfitter. Let's keep that heritage alive. Together, discover Cache Valley Bank. Mountains await. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to Snow Badger Sports on KMGS. Now give credit to uh, Kiesler for Snow College. Casey Kiesler on the 46-yard field goal to uh, give the Badgers a 20-14 to 14 lead here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's that's a big kick for, for where we were at in the game and the momentum feeling like it was shifting back to Georgia military a little bit. And so that's, that's a big, big leg. And here's the kickoff by Kiesler, and that's going to carry into the end zone and out of the end zone, so Georgia Military will take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. So Georgia Military started at their own 26, their own 26, their own 38, their own 25, so they've, they've had some big fields ahead of them, yep. and they've come up with uh, three punts in a row. In fact, they have yet to pick up a first down. The Badgers seem to have been able to solve that uh, Chip Cooper keeper quarterback draw problem. Yeah. Yeah, the last thing you want to do though is get a little laxed on it uh, because I, I do feel like there is a chance that that could open up again. So fourth quarter has started. See, not, only, not just Deuce that yeah. catches that. I can catch it too. That's your job. <laughs> I'm not going to praise you just for doing your job. <laughs> <laughs> Cooper hands it off to Walker. Walker picks his way through a hole. There we go, 26 and the Badger loses a helmet. I think that's uh, Demarion Holloway. Yeah. And he'll have to come off. The ball will be spotted on the Tell you what, Walker is, oh. he is fun to watch. He is a load. 
Uh, it was fun to see his different running styles. I mean, that time he was very patient, picked a hole, and, and just kind of danced his way through it. Sometimes he just lowers the shoulder and goes. Sometimes he's got speed. Yeah. Hand off to Walker again. This time he's hit right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one, but he is going to be short of the first down. It's going to be third and short. But the Bulldogs very close to picking up their first first down of the second half, and it's going to come in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and this is where Chip Cooper comes in, yeah. right? Um, he's, I would assume based on past throughout this game, he is going to hold on to that ball and look for the opening, and he's going to take it. It's going to be a design quarterback. Well, he comes up under center, and it's a quarterback sneak. I, the near side does not have him getting the first down. The near, it's going to be, it's going to depend on who gets to spot this. I don't know if that's the call I would have made. I, uh, as I well wouldn't. as he's played reading yeah. the line, I, I think I would have just run it the way you've been running it. And do you do it again now on fourth down in your own territory here? This, this is a gutsy call. This, this is going to be a huge call. Because if you don't get it, Snow most likely is going to get at least three points out of this. Um, and it looks like they're going to go for it. it. This is crazy. This is, this is a huge fourth down. Fourth and one. Are they going to try to draw them off sides? That's what I think they're going to do. Try to draw them off and then they punt it. I, I don't think you try this the deep in your own territory. You Not just tried a quarterback sneak and got nothing. Yeah. Three, two, one. Nope, they're going to take the delay again. Nope, they took the timeout. Did we call the timeout first, or did they? Oh, they did call the delay of game. Wow. So that's going to be fourth and five now. And a punting situation once again. So they picked up big yards on first down. Yeah. And that then second down, they stuffed them. Third down, they could try the quarterback sneak. And now fourth down, they're punting. Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't get that. I would have called timeout and... Low kick this time, and does not take, you well, know, it takes a bit of a bulldog bounce. That's going to come to rest at the 32-yard line. So the Badgers will start first and 10 at their own 32. That was, that was a just, weird possession. Yep, I was just going to say the same thing. A I mean, very weird possession that time by Georgia Military. I mean, I don't say anything very good very often, and I still don't know what to say at this point. Like, with I, that, I, I'm lost. Yep. <laughs> I, I think your best chance on third and short was keeping it in the hands of Cooper, but I would have. Get, keeping him back off the line of scrimmage where he has a yes. decision to make because he's, he's better looking at the hole rather than just trying to power huh? straight through. Yep. Yeah, I mean, they, that, that, that fake handoff to Walker and then the read option has worked very well for Cooper. Right. Um, and that's probably where I would have gone with it because if you hand it off to, to Walker, you got a pretty good chance. Yep. If, if you keep it, you got a pretty good chance. I'd, I'd, I would have never just lined up behind center and pushed like that uh, with the way that they're running the ball. So that seems to be the trend, though, isn't it? Yes. At, at almost every level. Smith rolls out to the left, looks down for it. Going deep. Oh, he had Wilson open, and Wilson just could not high point it and went right over his head. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a rough day for, for Donovan Mitchell on these long passes. Um, you know, I thought it was more the wind last week. Oh, it was definitely this, the wind last this week. This week it is very calm, and he's kind of overthrown, underthrown. Just I don't feel like he's as crisp on the long ball as he has been in the past. So, I don't know. Second and ten. Lambert in the backfield. Trips on the left side of the formation. Donovan back to pass. Steps up in the pocket, has some pressure, got a man over the middle, and complete intended for DJ Overstreet once again. Yeah, and the ball, the ball was high. You yep. know, it, was, it was left up out of the, out of the reach over the street. Um, like I, said, I, just, I just don't feel like he's either throwing, he's off his game somehow, and I'm not sure how. Um, I'm no analyst, so I, I'm not going to try. Tyreek Carter checks back in for the Badgers. Still trips to the left side of the formation. Empty backfield here for Donovan. So on third and ten, pass play. The Bulldogs rush three. Now they come with a late blitz. 
Got a man out there and he overthrows Overstreet and a late flag comes in. That yeah, could be holding. I'm pretty sure that was holding on the defense. Um, from where that came from, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. The only question is, is it yeah, holding? I was going to say, was the ball in the air? And if it was, it would be pass interference. But either way, it's going to be 10 yards. Uh, yeah. And the Badgers should have a first down. Should get here. a first down out of this. Yep, it was it was third and ten. You pick up a ten yard penalty, should be a first down. Yeah. Yeah, a little late with the change, but there we go. It's a big big break for the Badgers right there. Huge break. Comes on a penalty. That is the first first down by penalty for Snow College. Georgia military. Do, uh, well, he can get back. back. Yeah, they there didn't no snap. Contact. Snap that ball, get the free play. First and ten ball. Is that, a, is that a Douglas Dentistry first down? Do we give Colton that one for Yeah, that we, can, we can do that. Hand off to Lampert. Lampert very patient in the backfield. That should be face masking or horse collar or something. Lampert was yanked back by his helmet, but no call. No call. A gain of five. It'll be second and five. You know, the officials have let them play. Today. They have. They have not really called a lot. Um, Let's call it a game of four, second and six. Donovan Smith back to pass for Pea Ua. Incomplete, not even close, no, quite I, frankly. I say just something feels off. It just just looks off. There. It's, I don't know what. Big third down here for the Badgers to try to get some more points on the board. It's a six-point lead with 11.34 remaining. I would feel much comfortable with a uh, two-score lead. That's a big, big play right here for Wilson five, in the five, slot. Six. Yep. Lambert in the backfield on third and six. Hand off to Lambert. Lambert Ooh. stays on his feet. Push, and he's going to have the first down. <laughs> wow. What an effort by Spencer Lambert. That was almost all Spencer Lambert. Yeah, and, and he got drilled he about did. three yards short of the first down, stayed on his feet, and then the pile just moved forward. He so. did. That was, that was pure heart, and, and the video feed doesn't pick up what we saw. I mean, to see it here and to see him hit and come off and keep going was pretty cool to watch. That is definitely a Douglas Dentistry first down. Hand off to Lambert again. Lambert breaks a tackle. Still on his feet. Lambert still on his feet. Stiff arm and Lambert's in the end zone. Touchdown. Spencer Lambert from 45 yards out. All Spencer Lambert on that one. How many tackles could he break? Uh, I'll say three. All uh, right. Stiff arm. <laughs> a 45-yard touchdown run by Spencer Lambert. Trying to make it a two weeks in a row player of the game. That is a huge play for the Badgers. It comes at 10.46 in the fourth quarter. Yeah, two back-to-back -back very strong runs for him. Um, and he's going to have to pick up the load for the rest of this game because I don't know if Tillman's going to Yeah, I don't think you're going to see Tillman again. The point after is good. So uh, Spencer Lambert gets in the Mountain America Credit Union end zone. Mountain America Credit Union guiding you forward with affordable financial services and expert advice. Details available at macu.com. I'm John Sorensen. I'm a general surgeon here at Central Valley Medical Center in Nephi. For the last 29 years, I've been involved in the U.S. Army Medical Corps and deployed four times in the last 15 years. When I got back, I decided I wanted to work in a smaller community and take care of patients. Nephi fits that bill very nicely. The people are, are wonderful. I think all of my experiences have contributed to making me a better physician. I'm interested in continuing to improve myself and my skills here in Nephi. The home of Snow Badger Sports. Welcome back once again to Milledgeville, where the Snow College Badgers have gotten a uh, touchdown here in the fourth quarter. The extra point is good. Spencer Lambert on a 45-yard touchdown run, and it was all Spencer Lambert. That kick is going to go out of bounds and give good field position to uh, Georgia Military. They will start at their own 35-yard line. So 
Boy, Spencer Lambert, I, I really wish we had that on uh, video to be able to watch that again because he had two back-to-back -back runs, the big one to pick up the first down. I mean, that was huge. Yeah. And then right after that, he, he breaks how many tackles? Two, three tackles? He was going to get caught from behind. I've never seen a guy stiff on him, the guy behind directly, him. Directly behind him. Yeah, it's always been to the side. He turns around, and he straight arms and gets himself free and gets it into the end zone. Yeah, it, it was a fun run. Both those runs were fun to watch, and they kind of made the excitement of this entire game, to be honest with you. Georgia military. Cooper going to run it. And he slides down. Slides down after uh, the 39. I thought they would try to run with third and one. Right. Was, was something like that. I agree. Gain of four, it'll be second and six. Ten minutes and 31 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. The Badgers up by two scores, 27-14, as we check that uh, Utah Heritage Credit Union scoreboard. Man in motion for the Bulldogs. Chip Cooper back to pass, and he looks to run it again. Has some room to run, and great effort coming over there defensively was uh, Demarion Holloway, and he's got some speed yeah, because he's, he, he cut off Chip Cooper. He really did, and, and I believe, does he play the near side linebacker position? I guess he is. He's the tight end on this side, the defensive end on this side. No, he's the linebacker on that far side. Oh, Under 40. 40. Yeah. Demarion Holloway is the, now he moves up to blitz from that far side. And that's why I was thinking he was on that far defensive end. Cooper, side. back to pass, has time. Now he's flushed out of the yeah. pocket. He's hit again by Holloway, but somebody else has to clean it up. Oh, uh, we got a flag here. The face side. mask? Might, might, might be the face holding. mask might be holding. Can I go but, crazy and say late hit? I, 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 it could be. But I, I think it's going to be either holding or face mask. And we can't see personal, personal foul. foul. Face, mask. face mask. Face mask, yep. So that is the first first down of the second half. Where's he marking that off from? Should be from the line of scrimmage, which was clear back here. <laughs> You know, we had a penalty in, in Ephraim that was like a 20-yard penalty, which I'd never seen before. Yeah. Um, so the Bulldogs are into Badger territory at the 46-yard line after the face masking. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Cooper takes the snap, throws, got a man open, pass is caught. And that's going to be to the 35-yard line. So that's going to be enough for a first down. And Frank Osorio Jr. Is, makes the catch, but he was hit hard, and he's over to the sidelines and laying down immediately. Yeah, he, he took a, a shot uh, to his right arm, and I bet it's maybe a stinger. Could be collarbone issue you know, right there. It's the way he took the hit. Walker's checked back in at running back now. Georgia Military trying to quickly answer here and get this back to a one-score game. Screen to Walker. Walker has an opening. Walker still on his feet. Still on his feet. Finally cut down inside the 10-yard line. Walker. What an amazing you catch got, and run. You get him in the open field, and he is hard to bring down. I wish I could tell you what happened, but it was all behind a white tent. <laughs> Can we, can we go lower that just a little bit? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we can't move our stuff. Uh, we, they're on the, they should move their stuff. Know, six, maybe. So Good six, seven yard line? Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah, I got it. So first and goal, and they run the Wildcat with Walker. Walker tries that left side. He's going to be short of the first down. Now do they say he gets in? We got two officials on the goal line over there, and they say he's short. Well, there's two of them, and they're both saying he's short, so I guess you kind of... They just ran the Wildcat, and they're going to run the Wildcat again here with Walker in the backfield. Yeah, there's no surprise here what they're going to run. It's, it's just a run up the middle. And there's not much of a hole there. You know, they say he did get in. So a one-yard run. Yeah. Yeah, number 26, Walker. Walker. Run that ball right in, makes it 27 to 20. 
So now you go for two. I don't um, know. I think you go for one extra point because you really need really a touchdown yep. to go in with a tie. If you, you, you still need chance. a touchdown and an extra point. Yeah. Yep. So the extra point coming up here. That happens at 7.23 remaining. And it's back to a one-score game. Plenty of time remaining here in the fourth quarter. The extra point is up, and the extra point is good. And that makes it 21-27. Snow College with the six-point lead. We'll be back with the kickoff in 30 seconds. I thought there was only one way to do college. I knew I needed training to set me up for a great career, but I didn't have four years. Snow helped me discover that college doesn't have to be about sitting in classes, counting down the hours. They showed me a way to get the edge I needed, and fast. The best part was with their low-cost programs and tuition assistance, I didn't have to go into debt. I was able to earn my certificate and start working right away. Snow College. This is college. The home of Snow Badger Sports. A-M-T-I! Well, we've got an exciting ball game here in Milledgeville, Georgia. Gary Chattister and Nate Johnson with you. The Badgers getting set to receive the kickoff here. A little early, I think, for an onside kick, but maybe you need to be aware of it anyway. Just make sure they kick it deep. Yeah, I don't think you get lazy on it. Um. 7.23 remaining. It's a kick away. A high end of ring kick into the end zone, and the Badgers are going to return it from a couple of yards deep. He's got he hole. has got a hole. He's still on his feet, down the sidelines, and all the way out near the 45-yard line. Do we have flags? No. I do not see. Oh, yeah, they do. Unfortunately, I see one flag on that far sideline. So that's probably going to come back. I was going to say, that's usually a hold. Somebody uh, yelling in the PA? Yeah, I think he <laughs> forgot to mute himself. And <laughs> <laughs> We've done that. Uh, Return, oh, it was the it was the right half. Huh? Oh, was it him yelling? It was him yelling, yeah. So they're going to mark it from the. He threw his flag uh, all the way up to the 35. So this is going to be back to the 25. The 25, if that's if it's a okay. spot foul. So. Badgers will take over first and 10 at their own 25 with a six-point lead. Seven minutes and 17 seconds remaining. 27-21, Snow College. I see a big drive for Snow College. I need some points here. They need to get back to a two, two possession. Or at least run seven minutes off the clock. Yeah. Jet sweep to the far side of the field, and that's the short side. Not much there out there for DJ Overstreet. He's going to lose a yard or two. Yeah, the, the short side of the field has not been our friend today. Um, well, you're trying to run that jet sweep. You need time to be able to run that, and run in the shorts, you run out of field. Yeah. So no gain, for second down and 10. Donovan back to pass under some pressure. Steps up, throws, got him on there. A great catch by Wilson. But he dropped, no, he dropped it. He dropped it. So Wilson had it in his hands. I thought he had it for a big gain, but he unable to control it when he comes down to the ground. Yeah, it would have been a fantastic catch, too. So a big third down here. Don't want to give the ball back. Checking in for the Badgers, Amir Magruder, and he goes to the far sidelines. Pea Ua also checks in at the tight end position. 15 seconds on the play clock. Lambert, the deep man in the backfield behind Donovan Smith. Six seconds on the play clock. They do get it away. Play action to Lambert. Smith it's crossing route. He's got Peleua. Peleua has the first down and a little bit more. He's across the 40. Yeah, that was a great play call. Um, I don't know who called it, but I, the cut back across the middle of the field was was wide open. That was a great play call. So Peleua stepping up here with the absence of Ethan Wood, who was injured last week in Dodge City. Big first down for the Badgers. Game. Your score is 27-21. DJ Overstreet checks in. Pea Ua comes out. So the Badgers go with two wide outs to the right, two wide outs to the left. You've got Shadow King and Wilson on the near side. 
You've got Overstreet and Magruder on the far side. Handoff goes to Lambert. Lambert's in the defensive backfield. Oh, he's hit from behind. He fumbles the ball. It's going to be picked up by Georgia Military. Boy, Lambert had run past everybody, and somebody came up from behind. And did, he did not see him, and they stripped the ball from him. Yeah, how unfortunate, because that was a wonderful play right up the middle. He's mad at himself, obviously. You know, now it's just play defense. Five minutes and 46 seconds remaining here. Georgia Military gets the ball back at the 34-yard line. So you get my good friend Mo on our side. Mo, last name. Well, Lambert not happy with himself, but they wouldn't be here without him. No, they wouldn't. He's had a heck of a game today. He really has. And he had a huge game there. Five forty-six remaining, fourth quarter. Chip Cooper at quarterback. Handoff straight ahead. Walker. Walker runs over a couple of Badgers, still on his feet, and he's going to pick up eight yards. Yeah, he's the kind of runner you want this late in the game because players are tired. Yeah, and, and, and you've got plenty of time. You don't have to panic here. You need a touchdown and an extra point to win. Yep. A game of nine, so make it second and one. They've been here before, though. Yes, they have. How many yards has Walker got? Mm. You're sitting next to the stats guy, Grayson Ball. I'm just wondering. I'll, I'll find out. Okay. He's, he's got to be close to 100. Second down and one. Long snap count. Cooper's going to keep it himself. Cooper breaks a tackle still on his feet. Uh, breaks another tackle. He's down the sidelines. Finally driven out of bounds. But what a run by Chip Cooper. I'll tell you what, the running game for this Georgia military is not something they ever look for any team in this in this NJCAA, that's for sure. Not at all. Badger defense has to step up here. It's on their shoulders. They've done a good job so far in this game. Especially the second half here, they've given up the one touchdown. Hand off to Walker, here's a reverse for Lee Flicker. Cooper's gonna go deep, got a man wide open. <laughs> Driven out of bounds, a little premature cannon fire. Oh, they say he did get in. Wow, a touchdown. So back-to-back -back touchdowns by Georgia Military after the Badger fumble has given the Bulldogs a tie, at least for right now. We are tied at 27. You know, but if I'm Coach Erickson, I have to also look at the running game is working for the Badgers as well. Uh, it's unfortunate fumble down here, but, but it's not right. We can't run the ball. Uh, and I, th I think we're going to be in a good position to end this game. Extra point coming up here for the Bulldogs. Snap is good. The placement's blocked. It is no good. The PAT fails, and the Badgers wow. have a chance now to win the ball game. No worse than a tie if you can take it down the field. We'll be back with the kickoff in 30 seconds. In life, we all need a strong support team. In sports and in day-to-day -day life, we have a trusted strong support team at Intermountain Sampy Valley Hospital. For up-to-date health care tips and guidelines, join our Facebook page and go to our website. From our physicians to our nursing staff, our technicians, and other specialized health care professionals, our team is ready to provide the best quality care for our friends, neighbors, and local athletes in Sampy County. Intermountain Sampy Valley Hospital, keeping quality health care close to home. Live sports coverage of the Snow Badgers on We are tied at 27 in Milledgeville, Georgia. Gary Tedister and Nate Johnson with you. Bringing Badger football action on KMTI AM 650. I don't know if anybody's still trying to watch the uh, very glitchy stream. We're pushing the Verizon network to its limits. I think, we, yeah, yeah, we are. Um, but, uh, so we apologize for all the glitches, if there is glitches on the, the YouTube channel. Um, so tune in. Hopefully someone's tuned in to us. I don't know. Maybe we're just talking to each other again. Yeah, maybe. High end over end kick is going to be fielded by King a couple of yards deep. He's going to bring it out. Again, he has a bit of a hole. Breaks a tackle. Still on his feet. King all the way out to the 45-yard line. Are there any flags this time? No. No. 
So a nice return by King. He's had two of those. I'm thinking take a knee, but yeah, he, uh, he just turns on the afterburners and gets all the way out to the 45-yard line. Yeah, you take that penalty off the table, and he, he has at least 100 yards, um, all-purpose yards at least. Right. You know, and now he's got some other yardage, and so he's had a great game today. Well, he's playing here in front of his dad and doing well. Maybe we need to fly his dad home. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Four minutes and 10 seconds for the Badgers to try to get in field goal range or score a touchdown. Lambert, straight ahead, a gain of three. Well, I'll tell you what, old Mr. Lambert there, he, uh, he wants all those yards back from that fumble, and he's going to try to earn them. Well, he just lowers the shoulder. Anybody that tackles him is, is going to pay the price. Yeah. And I think he's going to need some Advil at the, <laughs> at the end of today. I've got some Tylenol PM for the flight home. <laughs> he could borrow. Second down for the Badgers, second and seven. Near midfield at the 48-yard line. Hand off again to Lambert. Lambert looks for a hole. Not much there, but he finds a bit of a hole and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Blow the whistle. Uh, that's how guys get hurt in the lower extremities. That is exactly how they get hurt. The, the momentum had been stopped, and they don't blow the whistle, and they bend him over backwards. Third and seven. 49-yard line. That's... What do you do? You, well, you hope you pick up the first down right here. Because I don't think you want to pull it back. Go. Uh, looks like we're going to see a blitz here. Yep, they are showing blitz. Tell you what, the little drag route for Jared Wilson across the middle might be open. Third down and seven. Lambert switches from the left to the right of Donovan Smith. Donnie, play action, pass out quickly to Wilson. Wilson's hit right at the line of scrimmage and dropped immediately. Credit the defense of Georgia military. Yes, they did, they stayed their containment. Uh, you, you can't go for it here, I don't think. I know your defense just gave up a touchdown, but you don't want to give them the ball with only 50 yards to go. No, you Two minutes and 18 seconds remaining. Your defense has played very well today. Uh, you know, I mean, a couple of big plays, but that's about it. Um, so I think you do put it back in the hands of the defense, punt it. You know, Coach Erickson does some, some pretty crazy stuff. Uh, he, might, he might try to fake it here. Who knows? Play clock is down to 10 seconds. There's the snap. The kick is away. It's going to be fielded inside the 10. Out to the 15, the 20. The 25 and close to the 30 yard line before they blow the whistle. A minute 43 remaining. Sure makes for a fun ending, doesn't it? Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so last week, I, I, you probably heard on the pregame, I talked to Zach Erickson, but I was nervous for three quarters. Yes. He said he never had a doubt. Yeah. I wonder if he had any doubts today. I don't know. Because we're tied at 27 in the fourth quarter. You know, I think coming out of halftime, he was pretty confident in, in what was going on. And just watching him out here right now makes me wonder if he's concerned about another trick play that's going to open it up. Because um, I think we've contained the run up the middle. It's, it's just that couple little trick plays. A minute 43 remaining here, fourth quarter. Right, here we go, Walker in the backfield with Chip Cooper. Left. First and 10 from the 28-yard line. Cooper back to pass. Passes to Walker in and out of his hands, incomplete. Wow. You know, it's, it's been in their hands for almost everything that's happened, so I, you, can't, you can't ignore Cooper or Walker. No. They're going to try to get it to yeah, one of those yeah, players. Those, one of those two players is the only ones that are going to be touching the ball from here on out. Um, and then the, the best play, that was a great call because you get you get Walker in the open field right there, and he's hard to tackle. And so Play action, Cooper's going to keep it. Not much there. No, and he was stopped by his own, his own offensive lineman. He ran into the back of him, which stopped his momentum. Elijah Wilson also the defensively for the Badgers. Clock has stopped. Did somebody call time now? Uh, helmet come off, so now uh, they're going to wind it back up here. Jake Butters comes off after losing the helmet, and then the clock starts up again. One minute and 24 seconds remaining. Third and nine. 
Now, is Georgia Military going to be content to run all the clock down here and well, not punt it back too quickly? That's what you kind of wonder. Just, just I, basically that's what I would do. overtime. So. Yeah. Walker has come split wide to the right out here to the near side, along with Frank Osorio Jr., who has checked back in after that big hit. Under a minute to go, Cooper's going to keep it on a quarterback draw. Not much there, and he picks up, no, he picks up five, maybe six yards. He did. But it's going to be fourth down, and now the Badgers take a timeout with 46.2 remaining. This is going to be a Central Valley Medical Center timeout from orthopedics to pediatrics. Trust CVMC. One of the best tickets in town will always be activities at our local schools. Athletic events, concerts, and plays. You can always count on an enjoyable time. Our children are the future. Let's give them all the encouragement we can. Go to a game, hear a concert, see a play. Utah Heritage Credit Union. Together we grow. Federally insured by NCUA. Online at utahheritagecu.org. Your connection for Snow College Sports. A-M-T-I. 47 seconds remaining here in this ball game. We are tied at 27, and the Snow College Badgers are waiting a punt here. And Georgia Military back in punt formation. Yeah, I don't think you guarantee a, a punt here. I make sure you kick it. Yeah. I mean, if you don't get the fake, but it's only fourth and three. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's potentially worth going for, but you're too close. Um, and the kick is away. A high knuckleball is going to be fielded fair catch. Tyreek Carter with the fair catch. So the Dodgers will have 41.2 seconds remaining to try to get in field goal range here. So what do you do? You, you run up, you got two timeouts, right? Um, you kind of need to save one, but you could. You could. <laughs> What's Matt saying? I'm not sure what Matt's saying. He's master saying go down, just get the he, thinks, he thinks Deion Sanders is playing for us, <laughs> and you just do whatever you want. Um, I, you know, you've got a chance to, to throw some sneakery in here and keep it in the middle of the field, too, because you do have the timeouts. Well, the Badgers have had some, some players that have been open. They've, they've had some misconnections, and they've been able to run the ball fairly well. Donovan Smith back to pass, has there's, time, there's goes deep. That was right. Over the head of Io Shatamai King and complete. Pretty good defense out there. It was. By uh, Walden, or Damaji uh, Walden. Walden? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and what, what uh, Io wanted was, was for the ball to go down the field farther and not kick it back into the middle because um, he had the step. Back to pass Smith, has time. Throws on the out. They're saying he's out of bounds before the catch. He tried to drag a foot. Yep. Magruder, Amir Magruder on that far side. So it'll bring up third and ten. Now the bad news is you haven't run any time off the clock. You haven't gained any yards. Right. And now if you don't pick up the first down, you're going to be looking at uh, punting the ball away. Did you bring me something? Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops. Lucky Charms. How are you doing? Mm. Nice to see you again, Deuce. <laughs> what are you doing? Down on the sidelines? Going, okay. going nuts down there, have you? So That's big, big uh, third down here for the Badgers. Third and ten. Smith. Gonna run? Nope. Passes at the last second. Incomplete. No flags. No flags. That's that's close. Intended that time for uh, Shandon King. So now you got to punt it away with 25 seconds remaining. Yeah. Shannon King looks like he came up with a little stinger um, in that shoulder. And that's the negative side of throwing the ball three times and not running the ball is now you're going to give Georgia Military a chance to return a punt and also have a couple of shots at their own. Yeah. Snap is good. The kick is away. It's a great punt. So it is a good punt. Might have now kicked the uh, coverage, though. Good job defensively. And on the return, 
was Frank Osorio Jr. I don't know what they're yelling for. I don't know, I don't know if they thought there was a face mask. There wasn't a lot of contact. He went down, and then a Badger defender dove over the return man. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I didn't see anything there to, to complain about. So the Badgers had good field position, but unable to make anything happen with it. And so, so what do you Georgia watch military for? has it here. Where is it? At the 20, 24? 24. Mm -hmm. If we trust that. If we trust the clock. Yeah. They got a better angle than we do, though. That's for sure. Um, what do you... You don't give up the big play. Get, get your safeties way deep. Doesn't even look like they're going to try anything. I think they're going to take a knee, maybe. Yeah. And Cooper yeah. takes a knee. And the Badgers... Take a timeout again? They took a timeout. They know. did. I don't know why. They're going to be able to run it out here. Oops. So the Badgers take a timeout. We'll take a timeout as well. This is another Central Valley Medical Center timeout. From orthopedics to pediatrics, you can trust CVMC. At MTCC, we're more than just internet people. We're the connecting your life people. For the past 115 years and counting, What's that? MTCC has been the local industry leader in connecting people and businesses by providing professional service with the best options in technology. If you need phone, TV, or internet service for your home or business, come see the experts at MTCC. Call or text us today at 435-835-2929. MTCC, connecting your life since 1907. Your connection for Snow College Sports. A well, the Badgers call a, uh, another timeout here. That's going to wrap things up for me, our next session. Of and we're going to keep this one right here. This is another Central Valley Medical Center timeout. We're going to check the Utah Heritage Credit Union scoreboard. Utah Heritage Credit Union for auto, ATV, mortgage, and new home construction loans. And we are tied at 27 with 9.1 seconds remaining. The Badgers have used all of their timeouts here. Whoops, I keep hitting the plus sign. There we go. So this is going to be third down. Christmas comes alive, but that's not all. Then you'll be off to and that will end regulation. So we'll have a coin toss, and then we'll uh, find out what's going to happen here in overtime. So we'll take this opportunity for another timeout, and uh, we'll be back with the start of overtime right after this. That's a rock here. The Boo Nanny. Jalen Scott here. Henry. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account also called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift cards, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. CO Building Systems in Ephraim manufactures a complete line of metal roofing and accessories. And here are just a few reasons why you should buy from CO. First, they offer lower prices. Second, CO offers top quality products, which can be custom cut to fit your needs. Third, they offer quick turnaround time on all orders. You can pick up at the plant or they'll ship the materials to you. For a free estimate and more information, contact CO Building Systems in Ephraim. Toll free, 800-262-5347 or online at cobuildings.com. Sand Pete Steel in Moroni was founded in 1994 and is one of the major steel construction companies in the Intermountain West specializing in structural steel fabrication and erection. Sand Pete Steel's impressive portfolio includes the Hale Theater in Sandy and structures on the campuses of the University of Utah, BYU, and UVU. Sand Pete Steel in Moroni, where their motto is done right and on time at 685 East Main in Moroni. Call 800-261-1026, 800-261-1026, or sandpetesteel.com. I didn't realize just how much of my kids' schoolwork is online. They use the internet to do their homework, take tests, and turn in papers. And with four kids all trying to get their schoolwork done at the same time, our home internet has to be reliable. With our new Centracom internet, they can do their homework at the same time. <laughs> now 
they can't use lousy internet as an excuse for not getting their homework done. Sign up for Centricom Internet Service with speeds up to one gig. Go to Centricom.com today. In the days of the mountain men, Cache Valley, Utah became a central gathering place for trappers and explorers. This enterprising spirit of community continues today at Cache Valley Bank with locations and services throughout Utah, including three branches right here in San Pete County. No matter your mountain, they want to see you reach the top. They're Central Utah's financial outfitter. Let's keep that heritage alive. Together, discover Cache Valley Bank. Mountains await. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. I'm John Sorensen. I'm a general surgeon here at Central Valley Medical Center in Nephi. For the last 29 years, I've been involved in the U.S. Army Medical Corps and deployed four times in the last 15 years. When I got back, I decided I wanted to work in a smaller community and take care of patients. Nephi fits that bill very nicely. The people are, are wonderful. I think all of my experiences have contributed to making me a better physician. I'm interested in continuing to improve myself and my skills here in Nephi. You're listening to the Snow College Sports Station. KSTI! We're in Milledgeville, Georgia, and getting set to go into overtime. We are tied at 27. And the captain's just now going out onto the field. Donovan Smith and Brian Cuthbertson for the Badgers. Out there for Georgia Military, only Demarion Holloway. Okay, oh, no, excuse me. That's our player. I see what happened. I you, I swear. <laughs> I know you can put it back. <laughs> I was I was used to that. It's uh, Ivan Arroyo, and we will have the coin toss as they're explaining the rules to these players. The advantage is to take the ball second here, so you know what you have to do. I would like to know how the Badgers have done in overtime because the overtime games I remember, we haven't done quite so well. There haven't been very many. Um, they played one last year to who? Was that Dodge City or Garden City? Uh, well, we had one overtime in the national championship game with Butler. Yeah. And we ended up uh, losing that one. Maybe that's the only one that I'm remembering, and it has such a bitter taste in my mouth yeah. that I don't. It, it doesn't happen very often. Snow right. does not go into overtime very often. Um, so there's not very many to remember, and I don't remember many, many, any at home. It's been a long time. I think we went overtime against Dixie. Yeah, long, 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 long. That was before you were born. <laughs> And uh, I don't remember that one going well either. <laughs> so Georgia Military is going to go at the 25-yard line. So both teams will be able to go from the 25-yard line. Georgia Military goes first. If then the Badgers will go. Now, if they go into a second overtime, they have to go for two, yes? They do. Okay. In the second overtime. And they've elected to go to the north end zone here. So Walker in the backfield with Cooper. Triple wide receiver split wide to the right. Cooper back to pass. Flushed out of the pocket, rolling to the right. Under some pressure. He stays on his feet. That was a mistake. Yeah, it was. He's coming in to make a hit was Easton Cook. And the ball came loose too. They're gonna say he was down. Jake Butters out there defensively as well. Also, Taravili Tuatama. That's going to be a loss of a yard. A yard. Yeah. Second that was, down and 11. That was a weird play for them uh, from what we've seen today, for him to just roll out and take the sack like that. Uh, yeah, usually, I mean, he's, he's either thrown it or he's made a decision quicker to run it. Yeah. So a great, great defense, you know, on the backfield. Uh, coverage, coverage sack. Is that yep. what you kind of I, call that? I would say that a coverage sack. A lot of time running off the clock, down to six seconds on the play clock. Cooper sends a man in motion. Another pass. Goes over the middle, got him on open. That's Walker. Walker makes the catch. Wow. He got hammered, but he held on. He is so strong. Um, Walker doing it all. Wow. That's a first down. Inside the 10, it's first and goal. Goal. 
First and goal for the Bulldogs. And now they go into that wildcat formation with Walker in the backfield. Can he pass it? I don't know, he won't have to. He just runs right into Jake Butters. Sam Walker on the carry up inside, trying to spin free. That's gonna bring up second and goal. And that's a safe play for, for Georgia military. 